Hello and welcome to uh, my rig rundown series of videos, uh, number four. I'm looking to do these around one a month, sometimes a little bit more than that, um, which is a series of videos talking to artists, YouTubers, creators, designers um, about modular, uh, this stuff, modular synths, how they're using them in terms of music, releases, touring, sound design, cinematic trailer stuff. Um, and today we've got Andrew from Arcane Roots. How's it going? Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, good. So for any of my audience or any of yours that are maybe new to the band, um, you are in the category of a band, touring with this stuff, using this stuff in the studio. Yeah. Um, but how would you kind of describe what you do, a brief history of um, Arcane Roots, if you will? Okay, well, yeah, I mean, obviously, certainly coming into this conversation, I'm very much... Um, uh, and as we said when we very first spoke, you know, it was uh, kind of, we started off and obviously my own interest started off very much in guitar and, and rock music and, and, you know, our band, when it started as preliminarily this three piece rock band and, and we just kind of had these big ideas of what, what we wanted to do with our music, but we've always had really um, varied musical interests. Um, and so it was always a case of, Kind of being able to take whatever we were doing as, as far as possible and so in 2006 i think we started informally and i think in 2009 i think we started to take it seriously and then um and then yeah we just kind of every release has kind of been since trying to take it to the next level and uh in the last well this last september we released melancholia hymns and that really was kind of a big journey for us being this traditionally kind of heavy rock band with you know melodies and harmonies and kind of long songs and and short songs and heavy songs and light songs and pop songs and and songs with kind of big old riffs in them and then really trying to take it somewhere else and and really take our music somewhere closer to the music we were have always wanted to achieve and and all the bands we looked up to and the artists we look up to um, and so, yeah, that kind of along with sort of buying a, a dot for a 100 basic system, <laughs> uh, finally, uh, I kind of just started from there and, and, and it's kind of, this album has really been trying to, uh, our, uh, our hopeful transition into a, a much bigger picture. That's not necessarily just rock music or, or whatever, and actually just trying to go with the, the, the music we want to create, which is, I think the rule for us is just whatever sounds best. Uh, and, and if that's a hundred violins or, you know, a hundred uh, saw waves, then, then I think that that's kind of, I, I hope that works. <laughs> I hope, I hope that's a good thing. But so far, I know uh, people have, have really well received it and certainly feels like a, a voyage from the beginning. So I, I think certainly I would, the music I listen to is, is almost entirely electronic and it has been for the last few years and so uh, I kind of very much naive and I still I still feel very much like an apprentice in this area but um, so it means the world to be on today um, and certainly yeah, yeah. I'd like to head towards head towards you guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's good I, I don't think you can do anything other than be yourself I think even if you get away with it for a little while people yeah. it doesn't last long i think people see through that yeah i think you know when you're being sold to i think yeah and, and i think that i i like to feel that our fans um have come along for this journey and, and have kind of accept these especially these curveballs that we <laughs> like to throw them because they trust us that we're always only doing the best thing we can do and we're only trying to do something better than what we did before and, and and to their credit they've been incredible about it so um so yeah and, and, and hopefully you know we get to show other people that we're not just a rock band as well on uh, vice versa so um so, yeah. yeah so i guess to to kind of sum it up and step us towards maybe where you're potentially going and get we'll, we'll get into talking about gear as, as we always do but yeah and a free piece rock band um i'd say very kind of dynamic quite mm. almost cinematic at points um Lots of contrast, um, tension and release, and th things like that. And then um, you said the later album, some pianos, some softer moments, uh, some polysynths, some really yeah. nice sounding sort of polysynth stuff. Um, 
is it going to get more electronic? Is, have you kind of found a, a balance, do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, so kind of the, for us anyway, maybe, maybe not, uh, maybe not kind of, uh, I don't know, the blurb of the album, but for us certainly, uh, it was this idea of having all these interests and trying to um, relearn everything that we had done before. We, I was, you know, had these grand ideas of the kind of music we wanted to create and the bands that we looked up to and, and, and where we wanted to take things. But having been so versed in, in the terminology and, and just the way we would play music and the way I would approach songwriting and the way Jack would play drums and the way Adam would play bass, it was kind of about trying to relearn a, a new language uh, and because we were just used to you know having our guitar or in front of us and so this idea of me turning up with uh, you know like a my profit 08 and or like turning up with a, a drum loop that i would made on the dock for or, or whatever started this this kind of whole big journey of trying to make that credible and i didn't want to make a, a record that felt false or for it felt um, unnatural. I didn't want anyone to ever be listening to it, uh, and uh, you know, someone especially like yourself, and just be like, "Oh, Arcane Roots found a synthesizer," you know, like, "Oh, they found a drum machine in their nan's attic or something." Do you know what I mean? I didn't want it to feel unpurposeful, um, and so we really spent such a long time um, trying to be competent at these things, and and I was had a very basic level of piano and a wanted to learn the violin and I only really had my, uh, I sort of mainly started off, I, I just got a, a dot for A100, the basic system too. Um, and again, it's just something I'd wanted for forever. Like it's, it's uh, I'd seen people like John Frusciante and Johnny Greenwood and Trent Reznor and all these people, you know, fairly in the mainstream, but growing up, I'd seen them with them. And, you know, I remember being on holiday and getting a book about, um, modular synthesis and reading it and I was like 14 I thought I was so cool I, you know I had to reread every page so many times um, but I felt like I was really like I was so cool on that beach impressing no one and um, <laughs> so it, it's kind of been it started from there and it really took us like a year and a half or so to really establish a language and especially for Jack um, I really didn't want him to play the uh, I, I didn't want the drum parts to feel like a drummer playing a drum machine. I really wanted to, yeah. um, uh, to, 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 to really try and kind of pull the rug out from under him and essentially lose all of our muscle memory as well. Um, and anything that was, that, that felt too natural if it, for us was, I was like, no, 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 you, it's just, it just feels like a drum kit on a drum machine. So mm -hmm. to, to, yeah. to sum up, we got to the end of the recording and it was only really then in the last sort of week of recording it, we were like, oh we're doing this naturally now like we're starting to do we're not having to push this up the hill so much yeah. so it it it's kind of been so exciting to finish this record and only really feel fluent if at, at then i like, so i've been like, oh, i just want to keep going i i just want to take what we've finally kind of feel like we're naturally doing and and obviously we took it live and that's been um you know that's been that's been a, a really good learning curve but it's certainly been like, let's keep going. Let's keep pushing this language now and start having, you know, it literally feels like learning a language. Like we're just starting to be able to have a conversation with each other. And, and now let, let, let's see what, what, you know, what stories we can make with that now. Um, yeah, so it it, takes, I think it takes some doing to kind of do that with electronics in the way that hmm. often don't have interfaces that want to be part of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's easy to control stuff, you know, over MIDI and, and whatever, but to quite fluidly do that um, yeah. is, is really tricky. And I know for me and bands previously, it just resorted to me as, as a drummer playing an electronic kit right. to a click track in headphones. Um, it's quite fluid in terms of it was jammable, it was mani uh, could manipulate it, had a tap tempo pedal next to the hi-hat, so my left right. was probably going anyway. If, if I felt <laughs> yeah, the yeah, yeah. pushing, I could make the whole machine push. Wow. Back, okay. Which was a really cool kind of thing, but it, it puts so many problems on stage. Yeah, yeah it's, it's certainly reli reliability is, is, uh, is the main thing. It's just everything, the whole show rests on, on that kind of thing, and it can just spiral out. And so certainly the idea of, kind of uh, finishing, I mean, I think it seems like the Arcane Roots thing to do 
is to write in an uh, an event that we want. So mm. if we want to take our band somewhere else, we usually write it into a song, <laughs> so that we have to do it. Like there's no choice. So it's like cool. Andrew, you need to be good enough to play this stuff live by this date because the song's finished now and it's got piano in it. So you're going to have to make sure you're good at that bit <laughs> by yeah. the time that bit comes around. And so we've been slowly over the live shows um, and it has been such a, a battle for us as we're so used to turning up our guitars if they're not loud enough or, or, or we, know we, can, we know about the EQ curve on them and we can make them fit in and we know how to make it sound good in the room without and having to it be engineered but then now we're so reliant on our in-ears and the mix and and trying to blend all this stuff in um that it, it took such a long time to get used to that um kind of uh the lack of control that we had because we we only had what was being delivered to our ears so yeah. it, it and and certainly trying to make things dependable every single night and and the stop there being an absolute sort of rat's nest of cables um has been kind of everything we've been working up towards, literally up until today, uh, it's still my main thing is, is trying, to, trying to add more and more into the show and, and kind of uh, make it something really special and really kind of um, show off all these facets of the record that we spent you know, so many hours doing. And, and like I say, I, I'm really stubborn uh, <laughs> and I really wanted for all the sounds on the record, you know, for probably only, this is maybe the only place people will care, but to try and do everything from scratch as analog as possible, you know, and, and literally build everything there and it be a one-time thing. And, and that's it, once that patch is on, like that's it's gone, like, but mm -hmm. just, and, and really not manufacture any of the sounds. And it, it really, you know, really put the hours in to get this one particular sound. And, and you know, for me, that's, that's what I love. I love the idea of, even when I'm listening to music, trusting someone that, they spend hours programming that, and and I love being able to hear something and being like, man, I know now that must have, how long that must have taken them yeah. to do, uh, and 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 that makes me respect someone and 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 uh, get into that music more. That trust that I know that they've spent so long working on that, even if it's just one take on a piano or a, a particular sound, and and so I just think I think that's where for me that's where the magic is 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 knowing that. You know. Yeah, just the. Uh... Quickly, I'll throw the uh, live chat up. Um, anyone that's in the live chat, feel free to fire away with questions. Uh, both me and Andrew are uh, checking in on the, li um, the live chat. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, uh, you can leave a comment, but the live chat does disappear. Um, if you leave a comment, I'll be sure to reply, and anything I can't answer, I'll certainly pass it on to uh, Andrew as well and try and get yeah. to any questions. Someone asked about um, inspiration. Uh, Rank Spielman, sorry if I've said your name wrong, uh, just says, do you have any Spotify playlists with music that you get inspiration from? To which oh. Jacob responded uh, that you well. do have some playlists <laughs> that inspire the singles Matter and Off the Floor. Um, we'll get, I'll, I'll make sure I put lots of links in the YouTube description when this goes off air and just becomes a YouTube video. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess it's a nice place to kind of start. Inspirations, either current or previous. Uh, well, certainly getting into, like I say, my my guitar playing quickly went from kind of learning the classics and you know the people you have to listen to, you know yeah. I mean, to to pass guitar. Uh, and then I certainly was a massive, uh, a huge fan of John Frusciante, and I would always see you know, like dot for A100 cases, uh, mm. you know, in, in, in his music. And, and then obviously the more and more electronic and he was kind of getting into people like the Aphex Twin and uh, Venetian Snares and Ultecra and all those kinds of people. I inevitably then started assimilating them and, you know, just I wanted to be closer to what he was doing. And obviously Radiohead and, you know, I'm trying to think of bands, you know, I'm trying to think of starter kits, uh, like Nine Inch Nails, especially. Um, uh, and those those were really kind of the people that I had maybe um, I had maybe seen growing up as a teenager, and 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 that's certainly like the desire to get that case behind me, the dot that dot for case. And again, I know obviously now I feel like every purchase I've ever made, um, my first one is always so naive, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then in hindsight, I'm then like, 
okay, I sort of made some good choices there, but you know, this, this is actually, I now have learned more about it and I know what I need to do. So at the time I just was desperate to get it and, and I had the money and I was like, right, I'm going to do it. Um, and then from there, I think it was half and half learning. Um, so certainly, and much I could do with pretty much everything is I have music. I, uh, felt like I'm listening to somewhat for homework in a weird way. Uh, and then music I, I kind of am listening to more leisurely, you know, um, and certainly I try and be really um, hard on myself and be like, okay, well, this is what I'm lacking, you know, and if I want to learn about drum programming, then, you know, people like Richard Devine and Datachi and Apex Twin and Venetian Set. And again, like, I'm, I'm very aware that um, I'm scratching the surface here so, so minimally. Yeah. I've got so many friends who've been showing chucking me electronic records for so long, being like, you'd love this. Uh, I'm like, oh, I sure, and I never check it out. And then, you know, I text them, you know, 10 years later being like, have you heard of Aphex Twin? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> like, um, and so it was kind of just a silly thing of, of, of just trying to get past the Hendrixes and Jimmy Pages and Led Zeppelins and Black Sabbaths or whatever of, of electronic music and, and really understand what they were doing because obviously there was a reason why they're the classics. So I kind of had a period of just not even really enjoying it, I suppose. <laughs> it was just homework and rhythm and especially then thinking how I could apply all of this music to what we were doing. And I think that has certainly made, uh, has certainly been a big reason as to why I've made the decisions that I have with what I've got is, is was like, okay, wait, I need a purpose for it. And whereas I wanted to make electronic music purely at, I knew I couldn't do that, and I needed to find a way to make it palatable in the band and and work on it that way. So I kind of had, uh, again, like people, um, like Colin Benders, um, who was someone I found quite early on, and I, I just remember seeing, um, I think Orbit, I think was one of the videos on his YouTube channel. Yeah. Again, I wish he'd re released something. Um, and the way then he started combining that, he has the Kiteman Orchestra. Um, yeah. And uh, that I just remember that just blowing my mind and, and being from kind of really just diving into it very blindly and trying to go through the classics, I suppose, of, of, of electronica um, to kind of learn about rhythm and learn about um, especially like drum programming and sounds and, and kind of really immerse into it. Then I was trying to see and find people who were applying it melodically uh, and were kind of squeezing it into um, songs. Uh, and so sort of hand in hand with that then I really wanted to learn the piano and to, to play the piano on the record and so people like James Blake obviously then was a great addition because his kind of jazz piano and sequencing and then even people like Snarky Puppy and, and the way that they kind of put these huge arrangements together and that led to more classical things and then people like Olaf Arnoldson and Johan Johansson and the way that they combine um, like sense of modern electronica with sort of melody and more cinematic stuff and so it, it's a very broad base and then obviously there's people like Bjork and and, and all these more kind of classic people who, who kind of put put these um these beautiful bits of electronica to, to song you know um, yeah. and so so much of my interest has been funneled into that as finding people who really um really applied it to melody but certainly my own interest was more in the realm of Colin Benders and what he was doing and being able to do like a a, a, a real um a more of a almost like a I, I've enjoyed people who have been a kind of uh found it quite interesting so many people have been classical um composers and people like Nils Fram and, and, and stuff like that as well like who then bring that back over um to uh, classical uh, to modular uh, and the way that they arrange that and they think of it in voices and, and this kind of thing. I think that's quite interesting and certainly where I'd like to go in my own sound uh, as, as me. Uh, but for the band, I think, uh, I think we've kind of got already got very strong images of where maybe that would, maybe that would go and really try and bring the two together more. Uh, yeah. I'm, I've been frantically trying to find this Colin Bender's video and that maybe a little chord hit just came through the speakers. Right, right. <laughs> Um, I can't remember the first 
video and I actually can't find it on Colin Bender's YouTube page. Um, we'll we'll note all these links down for anyone watching. Don't, yeah, don't feel not. you have to go away and, and frantically try and find these pages. We'll we'll link all this stuff. I'll, um, um, I'll follow the page for a few days as well and, and catch anyone I can and, and chuck links in and, and stuff. And certainly those Spotify playlists um, is is uh, almost entirely electronic. <laughs> so yeah. we will we will try and do one for. Um, for, for the album, we, I, I keep meaning to and, and haven't had the time, but I'll certainly do a playlist anyway. So. Yeah, cool. I, I remember it's interesting you mentioned Radiohead. I think it was um, a friend showing me Idiotech. Yeah, absolutely. That's our, my worst nightmare, if that's what you're going to say. And, and, just, <laughs> and then someone, and then seeing a video of them, and right. it's not this exact image, but Johnny Greenwood knelt down and just yeah. Thinking, hell is he doing yeah oh it's because it's, it's an a a11 a155 a1 it's yeah. i think they're using an analog systems uh oh right okay try to find another one yeah there and you know tom york especially in idiot text frantically absolutely wobbling Just, dancing whatever you kind of want to call it at the front and you're like why is he knelt down like what the yeah heck? right you yeah know, yeah if you're going to walk off because you're not in the song, you know, as sometimes happens in an acoustic number or something, just kind of yeah. walk off, let them do their thing. <laughs> and I, I remember that sort of hitting me. And yeah. it, it, it had this weird disconnect around. I was really fortunate, my guitar teacher in school, playing me Square Pusher and AFX. Right. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And then just this big disconnect between the two and then the, the, the dots, as, as you described, then, you know, the, you start to get these kind of connections between and pathways. And I think listening as homework's a really nice kind of phrase as well. Yeah, I think I, I end up, um, I do, I've done it forever. Um, it sounds really stupid, but uh, I always remember my dad, funny enough, being like, the bands you listen to, like, you should try and not listen to them because you just end up impersonating them. <laughs> and obviously I was young and like 13 or something and playing the guitar and I was playing loads of King Crimson and Pink Floyd because that was what my dad was into. And so, uh, and then obviously like bands like the Chili's or whoever and Jimi Hendrix and stuff. And, but then the songs I would make would sound exactly like those bands. I couldn't help it. That's, you know, I was just learning. And so I would then, I, I think I remember the Mars Volta talking about going and finding uh, uh, like the kind of the, the inspirations behind the artists they like. And so I actually started doing that a lot more and trying to almost, I think at a teenage, you know, 14, 15, like really just stomaching it because, <laughs> because you like that artist and, and they mentioned a band and, and you're like, well, I'm really going to just stick with it. I really don't like it, but I'll stick with it because they like it. And apparently that's what they're influenced by. And, and that's kind of followed me a lot and i think you know the idea of certainly for for this record and again like trying to find people that were starting to do what i wanted to try and achieve with with where i was going with my kind of beginner skills on electronica and yeah. piano and stuff you know. but i think it's and I, quite a few friends recently that have, have stopped and kind of don't like being anywhere where music's played passively Right. You know, you're kind of wandering around on a night out and or maybe just an afternoon it's quite casual you know you're not out to get absolutely levered yeah, and yeah if there's a coffee shop that's playing music and one that isn't they will definitely prefer the one that isn't even if it's yeah. quiet they kind of yeah. think it shouldn't be or for them at least they've no judgment of anyone else it right. shouldn't be just this passive background thing right okay as in like <laughs> a, as in they prefer a, a full-on commitment i'm gonna sit and yeah mu yeah right, music okay. shouldn't be passive and if if music's on they want to commit Right. I, I can understand that. I can. Understand yeah. That. I have um like uh, funny enough again like uh actually a, a very uh good thing I've just remembered is uh my friends and I uh we had this obsession with BT and uh, yeah. all yeah. all uh this binary universe. And, yeah, me too. Uh, I remember coming across that, well a friend of mine showing me that record and we got it. Uh, it's one of those um. Um, like I a DVD uh, release, wasn't it? Yeah, it absolutely. Nine I, different visual artists as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and I we I went out immediately and bought um, that record in in the best quality I could find it, and and like that DVD release thing. And and I remember I was so encapsulated by the idea because I immediately then checked out his other music, and I was like, what? Like, that's not where he. What? Like, where did this album come from? Like, it's yeah. It's you kind of just enough. find like a, a club track. 
yeah and yeah like and i'll be like dance thing and you're like absolutely this makes sense yeah yeah and like these vocals over it and stuff and we would literally um and again i think maybe uh, uh, my kind of pink floyd education had helped with that maybe but um we would literally just go into the studio in in college and just play it and god forbid anyone spoke or did anything and get the scorn of their lives is that we would just turn the lights off and just sit and listen to it and I think certainly BT actually was maybe one of the biggest influences. And, and way before I, I even touched the synth or, or, or anything like that, I just was, I thought that idea, the, everything about that record was just morally perfect as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. Like the idea that it's not his day job, it's not his, not his normal thing. And then he just did this labor of love on the side and, it, it, I just, the whole thing was just stunning. And like, it wasn't anything. It wasn't dance music. It wasn't EDM. It, it wasn't purely like classical. It wasn't, it just had all these vibes and you could really hear the different spaces and uh, changing. And that, there's that amazing bit with that um, kind of really jazzy uh, little piano. Yeah, I was just going to say that, that bit where it's the second track on the release. Yeah, the absolutely. Kind of, um, it's almost like these robots wasps yeah. are kind of yeah. flying over <laughs> yeah. the sea and, yeah. and yeah. they kind yeah. of land in this weird thing with odd shaped heads and it's almost like this yeah. kind of american downtown jazz yeah. but yeah. it's shifting in and out of all these weird time yeah. signatures yeah, absolutely there's absolutely. double bass but quite breakbeat ish yeah. electric drums but i just i just remember hearing it and because I, th I think um i heard it before i'd even seen the, the visuals if that makes sense and I just loved it. It's, it's an idea that has stayed with me for so long. That idea of, I, I felt like for the first time as a musician, I could really hear the space change. And, and, and there's, there's nothing I could particularly pinpoint that was doing all of that, but it just felt like this, this kind of slight glitchy electronic thing. And then it just became so much more natural. And, and it really felt like I was in some like, Paris cafe or something, you know, like really quickly. And I, I just, that stayed with me so much. And the idea of being behind doing that on trying or attempting <laughs> to do that on our own records was just, yeah, I, I and I, I can kind of agree. There's certainly records. I, that record to bring us, I'm very good, at, very bad at staying on point, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that record um, was, is one that I have, I barely know it. And I'm so pleased. As in, I love that record. I've now had it for, I don't even know how long, to, you know, it must be like 10 years old or something now. 10 years or more, yeah. Um, and I never listen to it unless it's all the way through. And I won't listen to it in the car. I won't listen to it anywhere else, but the best speaker environment I can find. And, and if I know I'm going to be undisturbed and I love not knowing it inside and out, like I know some other records. And uh, an artist, there's a, um, a female, a uh, French female singer called Camille. And she has an album called Le Phil. And I remember hearing her on um, Jules Holland, really randomly, just doing one song. And she did the whole song with just her voice. And um, I just, I thought it was amazing. And I completely forgot about it straight afterwards. It was before you could write stuff on your phone. And, um, and then like, years later, I was like, oh my God, what was, that, what was that girl's name? And I was just trying to rack my brain and searching for it and searching for it. And again, I found that record. And again, it's just, she literally just has this thread, um, this like drone, it's called the thread in the film. Um, and it's just a drone that they've done with all their voices. Um, and almost the, most of the album is all done with uh, just bits of her body and voice and whatever. Um, but it's really quite synthetic as well. Um, and it's just incredible what she achieves with her voice. And again, that record was just so special for me. I just felt like this is a special record that this isn't, this isn't for just, any rubbish any this isn't for normal day this is for yeah. like yeah. commitment you know and and so i, I think i can I, there's certainly records i really every now and then one comes along and i just kind of put it aside i'm, I'm like i don't want to know this record because i like my homework brain is 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 horrible <laughs> and yeah. so I, I i i don't i like not knowing and i like just kind of uh saving it for, for something great so, so i can sympathize i can certainly and empathize <laughs> yeah, with that yeah. well it may it completely makes sense i think as to why you'd get 
into modular with this kind of mindset. Oh of my god! Yeah, one detailing. Um, just to quickly inject something from the live chat, someone asked, yeah, uh, "Does anyone know what Apex Twins doing uh, live?" And I think they mentioned a more recent gig, which I can't speak of. But I know last year there was a lot of hype for um, Apex Twin with like they, apparently they found his yeah they they apparently found his setup I yeah the, the thing this is on um factmag.com right. um yeah and someone kind of broke down it was actually um a friend of mine scanner um robin rimbord kind of tweeted saying you know great to see afx twin mix up his intelligel live case um right. i don't know if robin was the first to kind of put that seed out but this was the case he was using um to break down exactly wow. what he's doing, I, I can't say specifically, but certainly in that case, um, there's a lot of processes. So, although it's running stuff through it, sound, I imagine that's not entirely what he was doing. Um, mm. Just to run people down that are watching what those modules are, um, you've got the 4MS Spectral Multiband at the top, which is mm. a you can kind of use it like an EQ, but each of the bands will go completely resonant and form their own pitch. So it's kind of like six, uh, really clean sine wave, uh, kind of little resonances that you can scan across other bits of incoming audio or use on their own. Um, bottom left is the ZDSP from Tip Top Audio, which takes uh, little cards in the front. It's not quite an SD card or USB, but same kind of thing, and just loads in code. It's just a digital processor, so that could be a reverb, a bit crusher, a delay. Um, no idea what I was using there. <laughs> um, the army green kind of looking one is a frequency shifter by Schwerman. Um, which, yeah, again, it, I imagine just frequency shifting, knowing Apex Twin voices, drums, everything effectively. Um, you have a make noise herb verb, very hands on reverb. Um, the Benjolin by Rob Hordyke is. A, set of oscillators and a filter that kind of feed back each other uh, there's some random kind of circuitry in there as well it's just very kind of processor and routing heavy um, bottom um right. i wonder i wonder if he's if he's uh like with like that richard divine type thing where i wonder if that's it looks like like you're saying so much processing like i'm assuming he must be running more reliable sources <laughs> maybe yeah i think so rather than I mean, it's not a typical kind of mono synth sound for Apex Twin anyway, but it no, looks no. like you know, running mono or stereo in, mangling things and having options for voltages doing that or hands-on control. Um, there is the Triger in the bottom right-hand corner, which is discontinued now. Right. Which is those free arcade buttons. So it could be queuing up things, hitting sounds. Uh, you can kind of quickly record a beat by that. So it might almost be kind of tapping out rhythms. Yeah. Um, a lot of switching and things, but until someone speaks to Apex Twin, which I doubt is going to do, <laughs> <laughs> no one can exactly kind of say. Obviously, people have speculated and FactMag have gone down through you know all of the stuff. What does it do, and yeah. what are all these modules? But there's so many ways to use all this. Yeah, you can at best just speculate. Yeah, and I think that's the fun of it. I think uh, I I think what's even you know the kind of and 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 I feel. Um, somewhat in that party myself whereas you know there's the kind of classic modules that 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 there's that kind of um stigma uh, and you know and i remember thinking about that before i got my maths on my one um but then i think what is so interesting is even in the research and trying to really learn about it and, and understand it is that it's like you know how many people have a fender strap you know uh, i think mm. it's it's and they all do they're not, you know, they're not the same. <laughs> so I think it's interesting to see what uh, what people do with stuff like this. And, and and I think that's, for me, been the most exciting part is, is really completely rewiring the way you think about something and, you know, to remember that everything can process everything. And audio is, can be CV and, and CV can be audio. And, and, you know, like the stuff that you think, the routing that you've, there's a kind of very traditional route <laughs> if you know it's your kind of oscillator into your vcf and into your vca and then you have your adsr triggering that like that's your very standard bog standard pathway but i think it's interesting to when you start realizing that 
you know, like, you know, the whole frequency modulation thing and thinking like, well, I can use audio to modulate this or I can, you know, every, every hole's a goal, <laughs> if you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 uh, it's, I think that's the fun thing is to take this, um, this, this process. And, and, and I think that's, what's great about modular and, and, you know, I, I purposely recently, thanks Father Christmas, um, kind of was really purpose in trying to look at stuff, uh, it was kind of a little more west coast purely because i was like well i'm starting to understand this side of things so like now it's time to switch things up and and like there's no filters <laughs> like kind of thing and i think that's 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 the most satisfying part for me i think is 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 uh it's trying to understand it and 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 mumble your way through things and you know have to research you know i remember when i first got it looking up how to youtube videos on like how to make a kick you know, and, and yeah, it, took me, yeah. it took me like all day, <laughs> like, and then it, it's just gone on and on from there. And, and it's, that's, as far as learning, I think it's incredible. I, I recommend everyone does it because it's, it's such a great way of thinking of the fun, like have an end result. Like I want a kick drum and then work backwards from that. And actually it, it you're spoiled by anything that just goes boom, like, it's, it's like, okay, big break down exactly what's going on in that sound and, and you know, what you're doing to this source and, and where you need to go from there. And then extrapolate that into a, a, a more ambitious sound for me was amazing. I, I, I love having to, it's like Sudoku, like every day. I, I, I have a sound in my head and I want to achieve it. And then I need to unpick that sound in, in such a minuscule detail. Um, and then it's so great to go from modular to then something like my profit and then like the geniuses at electron as well like that that box is just they're just boxes of dreams like you can just control and manipulate and lock everything and i think once you get past that barrier that workflow um i think it's 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 i think it's healthy i think everyone should do it and and really understand it because it changes the way i play guitar now and it changes the way i look at the EQ on my amp and, and the way I route my pedals and, and that understanding of, of such a core system, I suppose, of, of sound, or the very core of, of the sound itself, I think is... I like the, uh, I like the kick as the example, because there's so many electronic producers, myself guilty mm. in earlier years, yeah. you know, you go buy a sample pack that's got... Yeah. 500 kick drum sounds in there. Yeah, and absolutely. Use, going, use two. <laughs> yeah, 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 and you're kind of like, this one's kind of it, but yeah. sample number 34 has got a nicer top end, so I'll keep going. Yeah. And yeah, you just yeah. keep kind of flicking through. And it's so... Understanding what makes all these things means you can always kind of correct it. You know, if you yeah. do have that example, or you go, sample 34 is nearly right, well, you know kind of how to bend it or shape yeah. it or rework it i'll just remake it from scratch i'll mix it in or and it definitely does kind of re-penetrate through your whole workflow in terms of playing other instruments, effects software I, I, I make bits of samples and software patches and things yeah. for um, instrument releases and my software patching or digital hardware patching is definitely far better from having mm. gone into modular um, i've just a much better understanding of the whole process so you're kind of you jump straight in and it's a, it's far more rewarding i think that way yeah um, absolutely i guess so when do you kind of think the first time f fans of yours saw um modular in your <laughs> work has it been out on tour yet or is it a studio tool specifically or um it's something well at the moment, it's my child that, <laughs> my precious child uh, that I'm slightly petrified uh, to take anywhere. It has, this, I mean, I just took it in the car and it had its own seatbelt. So, yeah, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I, at the moment, I think, and again, I, I would love this to, to be the case, um, is, is certainly, you know, from where we're at, as a band and obviously the venues that we're playing are, are, um, are not, uh, kind of, uh, delicate friendly, let's say. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. uh, so, uh, certainly, um, like I say, we've kind of been inching stuff out and obviously the good thing, 
like I said earlier, about trying to force stuff into our into our work um, is uh, knowing that we'd finished an hour to play um, the piano and, and bits of sort of poly synth basically throughout the um, show. Um, and then we've kind of just very slowly eked it out from there as far as finding something that's stable and it works and, and every, we're not having any difficulty with it every night. Um, and so I've got a, a Profit 08, a Dave Smith Profit 08, and that's kind of been my mainstay. Uh, and that's kind of the, the, the main synth I have been using so far. Um, and I kind of use that as, again, I'm mainly playing chord stuff. Um, and then uh, Adam, he has a Arturia uh, Micro Brute, and he uses that for playing essentially just a kind of mono sub, you know, saw wave bass basically. Um, and, but the, the dream, uh, and, and this coming tour certainly is kind of part of that, is whereas before our live show is so sewn together and, and so immovable and, and, you know, everything has to, um, nothing can move. We're literally all on click in our ears and that's tied to the light show that I'm running for my laptop. And, um, and then, yeah, like we're running tracks of bits where obviously I'm playing guitar, so I can't be playing the synth. Um, I kind of, um, and again, that's part of the fun is, is trying to take this record that we've made and then unpack it and find ways to be able to play it more live, if anything. And so like, I've already started programming it so that, uh, instead of running the track, we'll now have the synths running live MIDI and I've then got it sending program changes to the profit so that it will change the settings, the, the, the bank settings on the profit. Um, and then it'll be sending the MIDI and then essentially when I come over to it to play that bit, obviously we'll cut that bit of MIDI and I can kind of put in my little bit and then as soon as I pick up the guitar again, you know, it, it, it kind of keeps on going. Um, and I think maybe with the same thing we've had with um, the drum side of things, we've been using uh, the Roland SPDX, SPD SX and I've just sampled all the drum sounds from the record and obviously Jack then plays them and that's ultra reliable. But um, yeah. we're starting to, and again, this kind of approaches us making new music. The idea was that we would have these little, very robust areas uh, on the stage where we could um, get very proficient at, at, you know, setting up our little, our little synth area or our little, our little, our little box of, to of toys and get that so robust and so that we know it inside and out. Um, and it works every single night and we're happy with how it is and we're comfortable and um, then slowly increase upon that. And then hopefully by the time we get to the new record, we will start to be able to kind of write from that rather than it be yeah. like most of, most of the record was, was us um, here. Uh, you know, I, I basically would, we would record essentially all the stems for the electronic side of things here. And then Chris would mix that Chris Coulter who, mixed uh, melancholia hymns we'd then take that to, to the studio and then mix that in um so now i think the plan being is that jack will then i think we're going to use the digitact and maybe bits of the analog rhythm or rhythm sorry um and use that to actually kind of start to introduce jack kind of editing sounds on the fly and obviously using the uh all the performance features and stuff like that and actually kind of starting to cross over so that it's a bit more uh, spontaneous and the idea that then we're running clock to me and Adam since so everything's kind of nicely and in time and then maybe when I can well I have the, when I have the money I suppose <laughs> to build a, a modular skiff that maybe I don't care so much about um, <laughs> yeah. that 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 maybe I then I would start incorporating that and maybe um, find something with DCOs um and and kind of start doing that but even still moving into the record like maybe something like the seo2 um from roland uh, and start bringing in sequences and the beat step pro i've got one of those and that's kind of maybe where i would because i love the electron way of working so even maybe that or an analog four and start actually making stuff there and then i think one of the things we learned from doing this record is I would sit here and spend all night, all day, every single day for months and months and months 
tweaking one sound, get it perfect. <laughs> and then realize when we went to play it live, we could never get that sound again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, now I think the idea being that we start working on it in the room and bring in sequences into that and start to be able to like, cool, I've got this amazing patch. Let's start the song from that and, and, and work from there. And it'd be a, a little bit more organic and, and a bit more. And the idea being as well that we all should know our little synth areas so well and they're so robust and we've used them live so many times and we're used to how they sound and how they function that we can start being creative with it. And I love the idea that then Adam and Jack are really working on their parts in the room with me, like they would a drum part, like really finessing it. And rather than me being like, now play that, now play this and you're playing this. <laughs> like, I think. I've, it becomes I've, I've, really, a really kind of nice, I think there's that initial, you mentioned it with piano playing or, or playing the, the prophet, the kind of naivety of, you know, think, I guess you mentioned piano, being a guitarist and thinking, yeah, I can play a few chords on piano. And then yeah, I think that it, some really beautiful things come out, whether tonally beautiful or, or dissonant or angry or whatever. But this thing happens not knowing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and then you kind of then get comfortable. And I think, as you like you're saying with the Sims, you start to work it, but you still don't quite, and this is no judgment of, of you as a band knowing the, the equipment, yeah. just everyone in general. You then get in kind of this comfort zone, but you're still well aware that this is just this sound world that I'm not comfy in yet. You know, if you've played guitar for 10, 15 years, the, the drummer's yeah. played for so long and, and you get comfy and great and you're getting great sounds and it's reliable live, but there's still just this kind of bottomless pit element mm. for me, at least yeah. to modular yeah. where you can kind of really crack what you're doing and, and get comfy with it. But knowing there's just so much more yeah. in there. And I think it's because it's a, a, a younger instrument. If we go back to the sixties, yeah. for example, I mean, yeah. guitar's not that much older, certainly electric mm. guitar, but it's had a much richer history that, you know, I'd, I'd hate to say that if we all pick up a Fender Strat, we're all going to sound the same and everything's been done. But I think there's a much wider arena of things being done. Modular still feels, well, I guess it's as much of a tool, I think, as it is an instrument. It's kind of Absolutely. both. It could just be a studio routing tool that's very mm. uninspiring, but serves a very functional purpose. And it's so... You know, give you the same case of modular as me, give the, the viewers in the live chat the same case. We're all going to do different things. Absolutely. And I love that fumbling around each other's systems as well. You know, yeah. friends who, who systems I've played many times, like you kind of just stood there looking at it, not knowing where the VCAs are or they've moved the yeah, envelopes. Yeah. And you can you know what all these things do, but it's such a kind of fragile state, both the yeah. patch and the fact you can move everything around. Yeah. It becomes so inviting. But there is this. There still is this kind of strange comfort thing that I think you get with any instrument. So it'd be really cool to kind of see where you guys go with that as you've each got this comfortable little station, if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think I think uh, I, I I think it's the thing I've said the most in in every kind of interview or any anything is that like I feel like everything. Um, everything that's ever happened for any reason in this band or in any, in any case, in, in, in any anything, is like kind of foundationally built on stupidity. And I, <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm so grateful for it. I, I, love, um, I love working so hard to understand something uh, or be do it or, or come up with a way like I feel like I think maybe it's a left-handed thing but I don't know but I just feel like my whole life I've used everything the wrong way until someone's been like you know you just turn that round and you could do it like this like this the, the, why are you doing it that way <laughs> like it's a weird way to do it and I'm like well I just had to work it out like no one I couldn't no one told me how to do it so I just did it and and it works for me kind of thing and I think it I think there's something so great about that. And I feel like I love having moments and I, and the, I have it so much with the modular and that's what's so attractive about it is that like there's some times where, I, where I've only got my modular or I've only got my profit or I've only like I went to Denmark over Christmas and I only had my electron and I had a song to finish and I was like, well, I can make 
melody lines on on the analog written and 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 I can I can play chords sort of and it was so fun to like finish writing a song sit in this little in my, just on this little screen and just programming away and really having to think about space saving and like I was like well I've only got 12 pads and some of them won't work at the same time and how can I manipulate this and how can I manipulate that and I love I love being stupid. I I love being like, oh, I could have done that this way. Like that's such of course that's the most obvious thing. And why didn't I see that before? Why why was that not the most obvious thing to me at the time? And I and I love it with with the programming of everything. I, I feel like I love even the presets I have I always laugh, like the presets I've been making on my profit as I've obviously been creating something and then saving it, you know, one along from the next. Like, I love going back to number one and being like, that's rubbish. <laughs> like my new presets are I'm, like my understanding of the instrument as a whole has obviously just increased over time, and and obviously then using it live has has just put this big pressure on on really knowing it inside and out. Um, and so I, I think that's for me the my favourite thing about about music is is just realizing something so obvious, um, yet you've worked you know thousands of hours <laughs> <I think those. laughs> to try and achieve it. That path to someone just really obviously going, no, just do that, and that's how it yeah. But that pathway, it's kind of like I had friends that didn't have, um, well, none of us at the time really had any kind of guitar lessons growing up. We were just trying to play stuff, and maybe someone knew a chord or someone's dad had shown them three chords to a punk song or, or whatever. <laughs> but, you know, someone would just retune it because they couldn't play a bar chord. they go, oh, if I, <laughs> you know, the equivalent of dropping to D. Drop without, D, yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But in other tunings as well, and, and people playing in quite complex open tunings just because yeah. they didn't, they, could, they couldn't move their fingers. They were all kind of yeah. punched up as they are when you're trying to learn. But then all these other intervals fall under your fingers. So you're listening mm-hmm. to what they're doing as they've got better and they've gone down this pathway and you're like, how are you playing that? And you just, you can't, in a more traditional sense of the instrument, reach that interval somehow, and yeah. they just go, "Oh yeah, well, that just just tune that string lower. That's that's always how I've done it." Or my dad taught himself banjo, so I tune it like a banjo, but he didn't know what it was doing either. <laughs> so we've always both just played in this weird tuning way. I think that's great, and it leads to all sorts of really interesting things. Um, a question that did fly by that I, I commented back to Nathan uh, Shaw's mm. in the chat. Um, what well, he asked about your recording chain. Um, exactly. We'll come back to it, Nathan. I made a note to that. We'll get into kind of gear and, and studio stuff. Um, speaking of recording, just getting into that and then we'll specifically kind of look at the modular rig as well. Um, the new EP you're working on, um, mm. that is kind of yet to be released, but I've, I've had a, a listen to the, the tracks. Um, where are you recording? Because there's a lot of really gorgeous electronics, almost kind of Sigur Ross esque vocal reverb mm. kind of stuff. But then we've still got this kind of glorious compressor smashing drum sound at the end of one of the tracks. And <laughs> yeah. do you use studio space when you need to, but do it all at your place, or is it all done at yours? Or what's the kind I of set like for the band recording? So we kind of have a. He's pretty much our fourth member, as such. I think by now um, is that we just uh, are much, you know, much like being in a band with friends you know I, I as much as i rely on jack to always wanting to be a better drummer and adam always wanting to be a better bass player and that we kind of challenge each other in that way uh chris has been with us kind of from the beginning like it was kind of uh, we went to uh stakeout studios um which is in little hampton and uh we uh we went there because ruben recorded race cars race car backwards there and it just so happens that we got him as a, uh, it was actually, Chris wasn't the guy. We, we just, we just went to the studio because of it. And uh, there's another producer there, but we got Chris and, um, we just kind of have worked with him ever since. And so, uh, he has a studio now there called decimal studios. Um, and he's kind of pretty much done all our records and we have this great relationship where usually I, we kind of ate. We're very good friends. We lived to, with each other for a while as well. And so we kind of have this understanding of each other, whereas Chris is a very tidy kind of, he makes everything so punchy and so clean and he likes it really precise and, and, uh, and he's really quick. Uh, and I am um, like, 
I'm a, I'm a moral guy. <laughs> like I, I need to know that, you know, I, like there's no track I'm sending to anyone that is not like 10, minus 10 dB. Like there's no minus 9.8. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I like everything to just be perfect and know that it's perfect and like work stupidly long on something until I know, but I can feel like it, it's doing the right thing. And certainly modular has, um, made that a huge pain in Chris's butt yeah. whereas uh, <laughs> so we kind of have come to uh, a uh, an agreement as such so Chris um, I basically uh, sort of make stems of everything here as far as uh, anything piano synth um, sometimes little vocal bits basically anything where I know for my satisfaction that I want to work on it all night on one thing and just get that sound that I'm after. Uh, and then obviously it saves us, well, mainly money. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, and then I can kind of get, and again, like uh, I, you know, for me, that's the devil is in the detail. And, and like you say, that's why modular and, and this, this world appeals to me so much is I love the idea of just dialing something in and really working on it. And I love, I don't even really care that anyone else might not hear it, but for me, knowing that I painfully worked on every single little line on that on that record, every drum sound, every everything on that is made of tiny little fragments that I've sat and recorded. For me, that was just, I, I'm like, I don't know, sometimes I even feel like it sounds like arrogancy, but for me, I just, I'm just trying to be like the people I look up to and, and, and the people I, I thought their records are amazing and people like BT, you know, like, I'm sure he was working more. <laughs> if anything, just you know? aspiring to something and appreciating yeah. the process and and not kind of lazily just because you know there's obviously a certain amount of talent that goes into all of this. I'm sure you could just record something quickly and it'd be good enough for some cases. Yeah, but I know, That's but you know, <laughs> and, and so I think some people know. As maybe not everybody, but I think some can. T you you couldn't tell that straight away for anyone that hasn't yeah. heard your music, whether yeah. that was yeah. hours of your work or it was an afternoon. They're not going to yeah. know. But as you get to know and absorb a band and, and someone's output, I think you can you do start to be able to tell yeah. that. So if you um, recording at home, then is um, just you mentioned a couple of instruments. So we'll just fire through them fairly quickly. What's the recording chain? For piano, is it sample instruments, real piano, keyboards? It's normally been like what, um, I mean, so for example, on Melancholia Hymns, uh, I had access to a piano for a bit, uh, but as, um, as anyone who knows our band, uh, <laughs> we throw things away, change them, move them a lot. I'm not very precious about something. If I don't think it's working, I'll just delete it and start again. Yeah. So <laughs> some of the record is, um, I think it was a, uh, Steinway, I can't, I think it was a Steinway. Um, but we did uh, some of the songs like Curtains, that's like obviously a, a real piano. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the stuff is actually uh, the Native Instruments Gentleman. Um, okay. I, uh, I got that years ago uh, and I keep, it's actually, I was looking for something today and, and I'm looking for something for live as well. That's kind of um, indestructible, uh, that doesn't sound rubbish. Uh, Cause I'm not really keen on bright pianos i like everything to be really moody and dark and that gentleman yeah, just there were bits of your music as i've been listening through and mm. have in the past that's almost like a spitfire audio absolutely with, yeah. um yeah. unicef a while ago and i think every right. two pound donation to unicef got a kind of it wasn't free it cost a two pound donation but a kind of free instrument for every donation yeah, it was the um, labs the, the labs yeah yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And one of them was a felt piano. Yeah, so felt piano. That's that's uh, you. That's that's uh, actually mixed in underneath yeah. the curtain, uh, underneath the curtains. One is yeah. And it's. I was going to say it reminds me of that, but it is that. Well, well I know absolutely. <laughs> I, I, at yeah. the time, uh, so as I um, as as the kind of process was going, and we're still because uh, whereas with the other records we'd do like a million demos, this album was just ten demos and I was just like I love this stuff but it's all in the wrong order and it's not there yet so let's just demo it and then we hate it and then delete the whole song start again just we just did that over and over again so yeah like everything kind of has a 
little different fragments. But at the t- same time, that's when Spitfire released Tundra, I think. Yeah. And uh, and I was just like, and I was starting to get into people like Oliver Arnoldson uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Johan Johansson and uh, Neil Fromm and these kind of people. And I was like, that I want that sound i want that space and that cinematic feel and certainly for the like that song the first song before me like i was just like i want that and at the same time i was very uh kind of uh feebly <laughs> learning to play the violin uh, i was like cool i can sample the violin um, and again like just literally in that room there just mic it up sample it and i kind of got to an ability that i could play like one long legato line <laughs> uh, nothing 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 uh if you heard it on its own you would tell me to shut up so but uh, as far as being able to sample it and kind of make that into chords and and kind of sew it together so certainly yeah the, the spitfire uh, element came in um and yeah so that certainly then a lot of the string bits are kind of a blend so i did some sort of real strings to really get that kind of close raspy feel um, and then, yeah, the, the Tundra and Albion One, uh, I think we used a, a lot of their uh, strings to kind of really bolster stuff. That's um, always been um, my kind of approach to strings as well. Just mm. if I can fake a, a string quartet, even if it's yeah. not two violins, a viola and a cello, if I can just get to those pitch ranges, yeah. with something that's real, even if it's not that well played, yeah. you can back the rest up with some ensemble yeah. strings. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was... I couldn't, uh, much like I was recording here to save us time, uh, obviously with the string stuff, I was just not at the ability where I could perform yeah. as, as, as well. <laughs> I was still very uh, novice. And I still am. I, still, I would like to learn more, certainly. But I was determined to do it, and, and we didn't have access to people who played it. So I was just like, well, I can just do long notes and, and sample them and then mix that in. Or some of the lines I could play just about. Um, yeah. And so I could I could do that in my own time, and then we blended that with the yeah Tundra and Albion One, and I think it it again back to the whole thing of the record sounding um, believable. I, I was really very um, self conscious of the idea with everything and the drum parts and the synths and, and the piano and everything that I just I as a listener I didn't want to be kicked off the train and be like uh, that feels a bit novice that bit or a bit unnatural or you know not 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 professional so if there was anything uh, to anything I could do in my own time to to really focus on a part and so I did a lot of the piano parts here literally on actually on my profit just using the midi yeah uh, uh, on and I could I could really focus on the the parts and uh, at the time I think I've maybe got hopefully got a bit better (laughs) since then but at the time I would just focus on those parts on the piano um, and just just keep playing them in in my own time and I could I could do that all day no, you know, not without having to worry about wasting anyone's time. Um, well, as you said, and money, if it's... Yeah, oh my God, yeah. You know, yeah. Even, it, even if it's super cheap at a couple of hundred pounds studio a day, if it's going to take, well, it would me a week to get a couple of piano parts down, <laughs> yeah, so, it's a hell of a lot of money. Um, so that's kind of software side for, for piano and things. Yeah. What about the synths? Um, be be it the modular that we'll, we'll come to running through the modular in, uh, next yeah. up. Whether it's the modular, the profit, uh, the electrons, any desktop stuff, what's the kind of recording chain? Do you take a kind of, I've got the sound I want, so I just need to get it in the box? Or have you got a kind of chain you like to record through? Or Let's try and keep it. So, for example, uh, the profit. So I've just got uh, behind here, just a, uh, it's a focus right 18 on A20. Um, and uh, it's kind of, well, for me personally, I mean, as an aside, I'm uh, we've been, again been focusing on just a getting to a, 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 a happy place with all of this, and then trying to bring it live. So we actually bought the eighteen twenty to use live um, because it had more uh, line inputs and it had more outputs on the back. So we needed that so we could start sending everything everywhere. Um, but the profit just goes straight into that, and again, I most likely. What you'll usually do is put down a, a basic part and record the MIDI of that. And then I'll get that looping, get the sound where I want it to be. Um, uh, and then I'll then play that in as if it was a piano part. Um, and again, just keep keep working on that until I feel... Uh, and again, <laughs> it's just my own stupid, like, 
I want to know that it's not, you know, quantized MIDI at every, all velocities, 100 block, you know, legato MIDI. I, I like to know that. And even it's, give, give me the placebo any day. But <laughs> the idea that the, the different velocities are coming in and out and that's, that's affecting the sound and, and bringing in certain different harmonics. And, and so I try and keep everything sort of poly-wise, um, uh, you know, feel like it's played in. I, I feel like, especially with the profit and the, and the velocity on that. Um, it adds up, I, I think. Even if no one can say, oh, that synth yeah. that isn't just a MIDI loop, you know, that's changing per section. Yeah. The fact that you're doing this over several layers of actual mm. live acoustic playing, MIDI, electronic stuff, the, the accumulative effect is definitely there. That's mm. one I think you can kind of, you can't measure it, but it's not <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not just a placebo. I think individually it's kind of hard. I've spent a lot of time programming drums and as a drummer using like humanized functions and mm. just playing a hi-hat pattern in on a key just to try and get some life. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. You kind of listen to an isolation, you think it's not that different to it just being a static yeah. just part running but then you do that on every part of the kit and then you do that to anything else that's programmed alongside yeah. of it and it, and it you, the effect of it all is a much more kind of human yeah well, I'd like to think so for your music emotive I think you, it's hmm. not none of it is just this static ah that's a loop that he's singing over and then the next part yeah. comes in and it, it definitely adds up it's I interesting I describe it as a as a good saying that I use in this situation, I describe it as hoovering under the sofa. Uh, yeah. Like, you know you've hoovered under the sofa. Like, no one else can see under the... No one's coming in your house and looking under the sofa. <laughs> but yeah. you know you've hoovered under the... You know the house is clean. You hoovered under the sofa. You know, you hoovered the sideboard. <laughs> you know, like, you know you've done your... You, you know in your in your mind that it, it, it's good. And, and like I say, for me, that that's... Maybe maybe just my my own um, neuroticisms coming out, but for me, like recording and stuff like that, it, it it's just it's just a really like sacred moral thing for me. I I feel like I'm I'm being lazy. I'm I'm I, I you know I, or I'm 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 not trying to. I'm not getting better. And and I know it. I I know it straight away. And Chris again is is great with that, and he knows if I'm just like let's just not rush it. You know, let's, it's just, let's get it right. Let's get that perfect take. And, and, and I think it does, it, I think it does accumulate. If you were to ask me whether or not you're someone who has an amazing ear and, you know, you can hear that straight away. I feel like even just creating interest and, 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 and something feeling um, believable, you know, and not contrived. Uh, uh, for me, that's, that's the fun of it. That's, that's the excitement for me. Yeah. I think you perform better to it as well yeah. you know if you're going to play guitar over the top of this stuff sing drum whatever you perform better knowing those things i think mm. it's not like taking the hooven under the sofa thing it's almost like being comfier having people in your house because you know even what's out of sight is <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this effect of i know our bedroom is super clean but the guests aren't going to go in there anyway or yeah. whatever that's interesting. I think the sim thing, I take a similar tact of, I try and get the sound right and then get it in. And if there's any yeah. effects, or if I'm running through some guitar pedals or whatever, I try and just capture everything separately if I can. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's the most flexible yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I like having the same. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's quite a few times, especially with the modular stuff, where I will just record a stereo mix. All the effects are on it. Sometimes it's amazing without trying to be egotistical, sometimes it's not. And I really wish that I would have captured a little bit more or left yeah, the reverb off or, or whatever. Certainly, uh, there's a bit more preciousness, I find, with the modular stuff. Like for Chris, for me, it was always, well, you know, I, I record my own stuff here, my own demos here, but, you know, it was kind of a big step when Chris was like, no, no, you can... It sounds good. It's fine. If it sounds good, it sounds good. I'm like, is that okay for you though? <laughs> are, yeah, are you yeah. going to have everything you need for it? Because, because he, as far as I'm concerned, I, I just love him to bits. He's just the best, best producer for me. Like he just takes everything that the sound that we, you know, we dream of this uh, stupidly far-fetched sound that we're after, and 
and every time we get there and, and it always just sounds a million times better than we ever thought in our heads and so it's been great to kind of whereas he's normally been this kind of obviously more rock based producer to be able to be like cool you know and even like i say working on this 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 these alternatives it's been great kind of almost homework for the next record uh, and obviously even on melancholy of hymns was a challenge to be like we'll now mix in synths that are super frequency heavy like the prophet just wants every frequency and yeah. especially where vocals and guitars are like it just eats them up um and obviously i'm there just like just turn them up just just turn, just no no they're not loud enough <laughs> like just it's it's a synth song like there's no guitar in it you need to turn the synth up and mm. so it's been it's been a great experience for both of us to kind of really learn about that and so again when i'm sending him something uh that's particularly uh, effects heavy so normally i try and get the, the modular stuff it usually uh it's i usually have like a a, a basic layer of like a, a just like a maybe like a kind of fairly moogie mono kind of sub bass like sound that pretty much runs under everything and that's kind of the real weight of everything and then i usually kind of stack sounds from there um if, if it needs a bit more teeth or if i want to open up the filter a little bit more for the chorus or for a riff or something like that and then the rest of it is normally like parts and textures and stuff but i then uh, up until really recently as well as something we're still very much working on is being able to hand them over to chris so i give him like an ultra dry one i give him one where um because obviously then it's difficult to give to someone when for example i'm eqing something and compressing it or um you know, are putting uh, like a low pass over it or high pass. And obviously that's hitting, uh, so most of the time I do anything like delay and reverb, I generally do in Logic or I do on, um, yeah. so normally normally sound toys, um, I think like, or um, uh, the um, glitch machine, machines, I've used uh, that, yeah. that uh, some of their stuff and uh, the Valhalla reverbs and stuff like that. But I try and keep that like the very last thing. Um, I try and get almost all of the sound and then give him kind of the driest thing possible. And then I'll give him one with like the delay, one with the reverb, one with everything in, and then maybe a reference in the song. Um, and that seems to have worked so far. We're still kind of like finding the best way to work quickly, um, just as, especially when trying to fit it into songs, um, it's, uh, it, 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 you've got that pressure of having to get, you know, the, the, the song bit <laughs> into it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas if, if you're just um, dealing with, you know, purely electronic, it's much easier to mix and you not have to worry about vocals. And obviously at the end of it, we need some kind of song, <laughs> if you know what yeah. I mean. Whereas I like to kind of, I don't care what is the main thing. I, I like it when the, the vocals feel swamped or, or feels claustrophobic and that kind of stuff often it's really hard to, to keep that balance in check. Um, yeah, and you've got to put things in their own space as well. If you, you swamp the profit in a couple of pedals or something, mm. but yet you've recorded the guitar in a completely different space or the drums, mm. or, and, you know, you, especially with a drum kit, you, however big or small or acoustically treated the room, you rim shot a snare drum and it's mm. going to excite the space. And if that's yeah. totally different to the, the dry instruments that have then gone through effects, um, you know, stuff that's DI, synths and keyboards and things. You, there is a balance to be had. So I have yeah, yeah. kind of an interesting point to try and work quick, but still needing to, in a professional sense, as you said, have all these different versions so they can sit rather than yeah, having yeah. Chris the engineer just, just fighting yeah. against it. And obviously, like, Chris uh, obviously then has his own very unique, and, and again, that's what he excels at is just sort of cleaning up my mess, really. Uh, and as far as I give him a billion stems and you know the left and rights of everything and I give him a dry one and one with verb and one without verb because I don't know what he wants and and same thing even now there'll be times where I give him a load of stems and I'm like oh we need to push the profit a bit more like I'm really not feeling I'm not getting it and he'll be like you know like it's just sitting on the vocal like we really need literally I'm literally going to do it after we have this <laughs> I need to pick something um is that he's just like, is there any, you know, maybe change the, the waveform or something to just sit it somewhere else or, or maybe like put in a little EQ curve somewhere that's just gonna just push it away from the vocal enough so that we can turn it up and it's not swamping the sound. Um, that's certainly been a kind of big fight 
we've had. And, and again, that's that's why we love working together is is that we we always kind of he's pulling in one direction and I'm like just turn it up. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and we we kind of meet in the middle and 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 it's a learning process for both of us and so hopefully then come you know the next record you know i i like to feel like we'll hopefully you know have got even further with that relationship and, and, and be able to create something even more i really like that that relationship though because i imagine you know chris having not played this stuff it's almost like not that they're um wanting to throw things away but they hear all this stuff that you've done and they kind of don't care they're just listening objectively <laughs> to what the end goal is they haven't yeah they yeah. don't know that the first profit stem was two full evenings of you staying up all night <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, the yeah. second one you did in in two hours be yeah. because it's a much smaller part they just hear yeah. everything for what it is it's like having a great mastering engineer on side or yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Actually a friend that produces the, the stuff and and i like then them coming back and it almost been this kind of militant thing of you need to make some space. I don't care how you do it, but this, <laughs> yeah. this isn't quite working. You're telling me it needs to be louder. It can't do that. It, you can't yeah. possibly have these things fighting. Or yeah, yeah. I love that kind of – you then have the cogs start to, to, at least for me, start to turn again then. It's like, well, do I maybe invert the chords so that the note's in a different area? Wow. Like you said, yeah. do I yeah. change the waveform? Maybe the EQ is entirely wrong. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, and then I think that middle ground then is this this kind of perfect thing that Chris wouldn't have done on his own. You certainly wouldn't Absolutely. have done on your own. Yeah. And you get this, this really nice end result. Even like doing the record, like I was in full, like kind of, we, we released a, um, we released the first single from, from our album thinking, you know, it starts like Kurt, with the song Curtains that we released. Um, and it was, from the moment we, it was actually one of the first songs we did. Uh, and back to, look at this, looping it back, the first ever modular <laughs> part, which was a question you made about an hour ago, um, uh, was I made the drums, I made a drum loop just using the, 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 the Doppler mm. and, uh, and just was literally just messing around with, with chords on the piano. And, um, and yeah, we released that. And almost from the day we wrote it, it was kind of what started the record. Um, and uh, it was kind of the first demo as well I sent to our management and, and all the guys being like, what about something like this? Thinking they might sort of crucify me. And, uh, and to my surprise, everyone really liked it. And then when we put it out, um, thinking, what are our fans going to say? Is they going to go back since? You know, um, and it felt like the most natural thing from this very sort of James Blakey um, kind of progression and into this kind of big kind of more familiar arcane roots like ending um we uh it it, it went you know maybe well maybe the best response we've ever had from one of our songs and the, at that time we only had that song <laughs> yeah. for for the album we still had sort of nine more songs to finish and so it was great to put that out and be like i've only gone a little bit down the rabbit hole like all right everything in the bin we're going all the way down the rabbit hole. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's go even further. And even silly things like I would just bend. And again, it's great to have be so young and so kind of seemingly feel so much like a so naive in this field as you know everything and every new piece of music I would hear and I'd hear a new album and I would immediately become obsessed with it. I could build that into what we were doing and um, you know I, I, you know would hear it find a new artist and then immediately learn something of what they were doing and try and incorporate it into the record. And I ended up with too many layers. And certainly that was something as well that we certainly learned was I would give him, you know, I would be like, cool, well, I'll have this kind of maybe like moogie, brassy, like sub bass. And then for the chorus, I will open up the filter a little bit more and maybe give him like a, a saw wave kind of thing. And then maybe I've got, I've got, um, like the uh, the Dopfer, the Wasp, and the SEM filters yeah. are great when you drive them into res like that resonance. Just almost sounds like a guitar, and it's just filthy. And so I give him like two of them for the riff, and we just noticed that doing one <laughs> really good one <laughs> was yeah. was actually so much more effective because while it sounds so good in the room, and me sitting here in this little room and and just you know all night in and enjoying it um actually just creating something 
really, really, really again, just spending more time on it, <laughs> really, <laughs> to get one amazing sound that we were really happy with. Um, and actually, like moving into this, uh, these new alternative things, like I've really tried to focus on one spec, you know, spectacular take, <laughs> if you know what I mean, that, uh, yeah. that just that just does everything. And frequency wise, it's way less kind of um, way, way less kind of uh, boastful. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it, it kind of it, it, it just seems to squeeze in so much better. And, and I get the volume that I want out of it. And kind of then this time around we've actually kind of just made little tweaks as we've gone rather than trying to squeeze in you know all these sounds and stack them and even like stupid stuff like the desire to use more than one oscillator is just it's there and you're like oh i could just add a little bit of a square wave on top of that or, yeah i'll just you know, stack it in unison because yeah. it sounds yeah. bigger and yeah absolutely but you, you end up losing real estate so it, it this time around as far as in the band context is concerned anyway yeah um, we, um, we, we've kind of stuck with that I'm certainly really guilty of kind of overly bombastic, big, huge symphony yeah. riffs, yeah. just yeah. leaving no room for anyone. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've left the video. You mentioned the track curtains. I've, I'm mm. finding any excuse to leave it playing in the background. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of cinematography and the shooting of all these videos and all the color grading of it all, it just it looks really cool. Um, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, again, I'll link all this for people in, that are watching this. Um, yeah, it's it's a strange kind of like you said. You've got two oscillators, so you think, well, I'll just you know stack them in unison. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. With, with guitar as well, you know, you it's kind of that thinking more is always more thing. Well, I'll double track all the distorted parts, and then you realise that too many distorted guitars doesn't lead to an ultimate guitar sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that actually, I don't know if it was in like the um, the album the vh1 documentary on metallica's black album where they're on about triple tracking hetfield's guitar and I, I can't remember the engineer's name on that album but he talks about having to back the drive off like the more you're gonna layer it the less distorted it, it can, yeah. can this kind of fictional roof of energy that it can have yeah, absolutely. um so a lot about recording the music which is is great i love geeking out about all this stuff Let's get into modular more um, well, specifically. Um, I'll pull up uh, an image of your setup that you sent across. Uh, not that one. There we go. So, what's this kind of primary use in the studio? If you like, is it is it lots of obviously modular doesn't lend itself to being polyphonic particularly yeah. well without spending an absolute ton. Um, and kind of mastering that, unless you're Colin Benders, um, <laughs> um, is really tricky as well. So is this kind of the bass synth for the band in the studio, or is it more textural? Uh, it kind of, so as far as, um, as again, like I, I kind of said before, for, for the moment, um, it, it feels like most of my sort of purchasing, as I either kind of started somewhere in naivety uh, and then slowly I've kind of started integrating uh, again as I've been learning myself and again I, I kind of feel so young uh, <laughs> within this um, but then it's kind of been sort of more specific purchases and so obviously I, I when I first got the uh, the dot for basic system it, it was again it's just I, I really wanted it and I was like well I don't really know enough and it had kind of everything I would sort of need as far as the module that I knew and, and, the, and the kind of uh, synthesis that I knew and understood so far. Um, and then, so that was kind of my starting point. And then I started to make pretty much everything through the Dotfer. So I would do all of the drums and then um, do like a paraphonic kind of chordal thing or um, yeah. try and kind of, kind of uh, you know, or have two very kind of... Uh, to, to, to just kind of contrapuntal uh, monosynth lines type thing. Yeah. Um, and then everything from then, I mean, really, almost everything I've got was kind of acquired um, for the album uh, in a way. Uh, it was kind of uh, something would uh, crop up, a hole would <laughs> kind of crop up. Like, I, I really need something to cover this area. Um, so it started off being kind of 
doing everything. But then it was kind of like, cool, it'd be good to have, um, especially even for the songwriting aspect, that I could then have drums running from one thing and, and then kind of uh, as many different voices I could get out of the, uh, the modular as possible. And then I could have kind of a chordal type of thing running off the profit. Um, so as a very, like, as in, if I was judging my template in Logic, uh, I have the analog rhythm, uh, and I basically, uh, I, I like to uh, program that all in the box because the, the uh, P-locks and all that kind of stuff yeah. uh, uh, is just incredible. Um, so, and again, I just, I feel so cheap just sending MIDI through it. So, <laughs> so I, like, I like knowing that it's like, and also I would like to perform it um, separately as well. So I feel like doing it now, I'm saving myself so much time. And, I love the idea of just working on that as one thing. And that's, I'm like, cool, that's my drum machine. And that's, that's dealing with most of my rhythmic things. Um, then I'll definitely do, um, I mean, I don't know how you can't without the, uh, the mini mod stuff. It's just, it's just the place of dreams. Uh, <laughs> so it's just everything I have ever heard uh, as far as uh, just a, a fantastic, beautiful, brassy, rich sound um and so that's my normal kind of bass running out through everything and then i'll put the profit on um and do a, a poly thing on the chords so normally i do a, you know like a sine wave or a triangle wave type verse that's kind of down and then obviously you know open it up and use sawtooth and stuff like that yeah like the filters and whatever um and then I kind of like to keep everything else on the dock for, uh, well, on the modular. So yeah, I certainly the the newest purchases again um, was I've been trying to for, for, for the most part it it's had to all my purchases have revolved around a, a, a need uh, and it was kind of uh, to explain maybe where I went from after the having the basic system. I kind of was like, cool these these are the sounds I really need to, to work on records in the band. And, yeah. uh, and they've had to fill a purpose. And I've kind of been like, well, I want to try and cover all my areas. And so it was like, cool, I'd like something that is kind of fairly sort of, a, a, you know, ladder filter, Moog type arrangement. Um, something that's a little bit kind of Roland-y, um, kind of OTA type thing. Um, and obviously like the SEM, uh, filter and the wasp filter uh, are just their own characters in their in themselves and and then very very recently uh, I got the DPO and the maths uh, again trying to look for something um, not what I had nothing yeah. like what I already had in that system um, especially I think I'm now uh, kind of my current focus is a I'd like to get something doing something with a bit more sequencing uh, within my module. I have a BeatStep Pro and, and I use that for a lot of the sequencing. And again, I, I like the idea of knowing that I've programmed it all on the BeatStep Pro and done that as much as I can to like control every little thing and the velocities of everything and then record it after that. Um, yeah. But it'd be great like a Metropolis or something or the um, ER101s, um, something, something where I could start building songs um, within the case. Um, or, or like even the uh, pressure points, um, like with the brains and pressure points, like that, that, uh, and uh, the Rene, like yeah. Oh, see, this is all money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of <laughs> course, money. I'd like more money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and maybe look at, at, at kind of building more songs or more things that are kind of just the modular. But for the moment, it's been a lot of processing and kind of a lot of melodic lines um and and polyphony but then uh building drones and textures and pretty much everything on the record i mean but if it's not if it's not the profit or the electron there is most certainly the, the top <laughs> yeah uh, and i like the idea i i just i just i just love it <laughs> so I, I i love working on it and and so i, I kind of try and keep everything um through that and, and it's a challenge i love hearing something a melodic line or, or a different texture in my head and then trying to work back from that and trying to create that um, with the modular. And so 
I try to just keep it as a varied palette as possible, but I'd certainly like to work towards looking at more digital, um, more digital modules, um, yeah. and 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 uh, even very 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 recently, like I've been listening to a friend of mine. Uh, he, he sent me um, some demos of his, and I was like, "Oh, how did you make it?" And he made them all um, just building samples of his own, and. Uh, I just I was like, oh, that sounds so clean, <laughs> so clean and beautiful and glitchy, and, and obviously then again that falls into your Apex Twin, Richard Divine like world, and so it'd be good to have something that was, you know, like the Tip Top One or um, yeah, some clean sample playback. Yeah, absolutely. And I wondered if that was maybe on that on the Apex Twin thing, maybe he was doing something similar with a, a wavetable, and he's kind of like like the Morphogene that kind of vibe. Yeah, whether he's kind of using that as a, as a, a or much like kind of Venetian snares, where he's kind of, I'm assuming, got the electron changing uh, the sample and stuff like this, and and kind of just changing the start and end times, and and kind of trying to trying to kind of sample and hold it in a weird way. Like a, yeah, well, I've, I've just just zoomed in on on the bit of the image of the setup. I think the, the, you know, having the range of the filters in there, the kind of Jove being Rolandish. Hmm. Sam obviously being the Oberheim, yeah. Wasp being the Wasp, or there's the Jasper DIY thing now. If anyone wants a kind of Wasp synth, there's people making more. Right. Um, the Mini Mod, which is the Moog like, and the Expander, which is the Expander kind of Cog MS20. Yeah, very, very yeah. much in that. In it's actually um again uh, most of them I've kind of I, again I've just been sort of trial and error, and obviously getting. A greater understanding but even silly things as in I, I very nearly went for the Polaris um, okay. I, I'm, in lo I'm in love with Intelligels uh, just the look of them are just fantastic but I, I like how sort of clean they are as, a, as, yeah. as a, I'm aware that so, the SEM and the Wasp and the 106 there are all quite dirty filters and, and I, I'm trying to have something that's a little cleaner um, but yeah like again just to like a lot of the we were saying the problem that sometimes I, I would, especially with a, a low pass, is that, and that's maybe also some of the problem I find with the profit is that I, I can't push an EQ curve, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. until later. Uh, and so, again, maybe looking at the uh, 106 is quite good because you have so many different types of filters. And so, sometimes I'll, I'll if I just want to kind of clean it up a little bit or push a particular frequency then um that's actually a really handy kind of tool i would say i actually use it more as i rarely use it on its own um as it, actually it's really nice for snares um as well because it's yeah. got the whole high pass and low pass thing so you can kind of pick out a really nice area um i think yes yeah, it's, it's those, very functional yeah i think you need those different uh, colors dissonant in the Live chat just mentioned picking up a top of Brillo multi filter. To which right. my response was, it's a really quite clean filter, um, and, and that's almost kind of seen as a dirty word sometimes. I like, oh, it's not this right. driven, lovely, thick, oozy kind of Moog yeah. thing or yeah. Sam, or but yeah. you can't. Everything can't be driven all the time. That's yeah. exactly what this yeah. just came back with in the live chat. You know exactly. I wanted something clean and precise, and it's a bit yeah. like you know, it's like having a a Les Paul loaded with bare knuckle pickups that's just going to drive yeah, yeah, yeah. pedal down yeah. the chain and the amp yeah. and then having the kind of weedy little telecaster in the corner it's still got its use and, and you can kind of see yeah, that yeah. in your setup at the minute you've got these kind of different back ends or midpoints if you like yeah. with the filters um so I mean, in terms of just thinking about it going back to this being live with modular hmm. it needs to be something that if it breaks down you can replace obviously i mean a profit yeah. eight they're not in every music store obviously but yeah i'm very scared it's my biggest fear uh, but so you can far. be in another country and and feasibly get another profit you know it's not yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. not you know it's not easy but yeah. it, not kind not of with doing... my kidneys <laughs> <laughs> but, no. it's, but it's you know it it's possible whereas yeah, yeah. with a custom modular setup it is highly unlikely yeah, yeah you're gonna be able to borrow it or replace it or if you can get back to germany you're fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> they have they keep them there <laughs> yeah but it's I, I don't know so i mean i don't know where i'm going with it i just kind of trying to think of this a band I, taking I, modular on stage i mean 
obviously we, we talked about Johnny Greenwood playing it with Radiohead, but their Radiohead, there was much money and you know oh, secondary and, and people who cared for the and, and, and whatever. But yeah. would you want just a, a kind of skiff, or would you be looking to take the, a nine UK? So is uh, that think, big? So yeah. like uh, to kind of uh, to kind of sketch out, I suppose. Certainly, my dream for this next record is that, like we kind of had our theory of our little synth island, um, the idea being that we can kind of create stuff on the fly um, and get those sounds in the room uh, necessarily without uh, kind of doing the production beforehand and then trying to recreate those sounds. I, I love the idea of really getting the most out of these, you know, these little kind of, we said little sort of synth islands that we've kind of known and loved and we know they work and they're reliable and uh so i think my dream would certainly be that for example like something i had in mind was certainly like the seo2 or something like that where you've got quite a fair amount of effects in it and it's quite a dirty little synth really yeah um, and you can pick it up anywhere it's not the worst thing in the world if it you know gets falls off or gets a, someone throws a pint at it or something. Um, and it's got that sequencer and that kind of thing. I think it would be maybe, I would certainly like the idea where we all have our synthesizers clocked and I'll, we all have our, sorry, our synthesizers, our um, sequencers clocked together. And we can kind of go between this line of much like, a, almost like a DJ set in a way, or like a, if, if you're doing it on Ableton, where you have your sequencer playing and then you can trigger the next sequence and kind of yeah. essentially do this really organic thing where we can kind of switch from, like I think battles and people like that do it really, really well where they're kind of switching between different things. And uh, if you've heard the, the newest incarnation of uh, After Clang, a band called Lima, um, again, they, they, they have this kind of, they have their little synth islands but they're kind of constantly switching the stuff between stuff. But you can tell, even though their little stations are quite small, they've got those sounds from those stations and they're really comfortable with them. And so I think it would be, as with everything, annoyingly for this band, <laughs> it'd be like a flexible arrangement where certainly like, I love the idea of something like, um, like with the electron side of things where I can almost uh, chain uh, or chain chains together yeah. to make songs and, and have that uh, again we can clock all of that stuff um, and have that going so I know like the ER 101 seems to be one of the only things I've seen I know Colin Benders is, was using that and that yeah. looks like you can kind of keep evolving that to some degree um, yeah. uh, but at the same time there's something that I really enjoy about having like a metropolis uh, and having that running a sequence and then evolving that sequence bit by bit, you know, in, in the room and, and, and it being this kind of really flexible thing. Um, I think certainly my biggest fear is certainly uh, tuning, I think maybe yeah. with everything. Um, I know we spoke before about like having, finding something that's maybe like a DCO. Yeah, um, something digital or almost yeah. like sampled playback of your oscillator. Yeah. I think when we spoke uh, just before we've done this today, yeah. I mentioned... Um, it was Cyrus Rex that was that, that sampled just his oscillator. So he'd set up the whole patch, but then split just the oscillators out, and he would just run that as sample playback. So the rest of the case was all entirely live, but just didn't want to risk. It was Depeche Mode or Nine Inch Nails or something. Yeah, he, said, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was supporting. You don't want to risk bringing something in and it be flat or sharp or. Yeah. Well, it's having. Having people to save you in that situation as well. Yeah, like, I'm sure. I'm sure Radiohead have a team of people cuddling that synthesizer off the stage and on again. Yeah, uh, and, kind of, uh, and and it's so that's kind of again so much of our band is based around problem solving and writing things to solve problems and create problems, uh, which we're also good at. Uh, <laughs> but this idea of of having um, like even I had even from the basic system I had a few spare modules from the dot phone. I was like, great, like. I don't need them. I've got stuff that does do those sounds much better now and, and, and to a much you know, greater quality or, or something like it's excess module. And maybe starting from something like that. Um, and I like the idea of, again, I, I imagine it will just grow with the more flexibility that we want. And that's kind of the fun is getting in the room and, and being like, okay, wh where do we need this to go? Where would we like it to go? Um, mm. I certainly, uh, again, like, 
uh, okay, it, it, it's so, um, certainly there's also, I love the textual aspect of things and something we like to do live. And certainly a, a huge part of taking this all live has been, I, uh, I really was keen as much as to do this, the amount of work we've done on this record is that when we take it live, that it's its own thing and um, it becomes something where I love the idea of doing a song in an alternate way uh, and it just be for that tour or maybe we have a certain theme of the tour um, and we perform the songs like something I've done consequently after we finish this record is I re-recorded all of the songs that we've done in the past um, with my synths. Uh, literally the same layering, everything like that. And it was really fun to go back to old songs and create these synth parts over them. So when we play it live, it kind of feels like it's all in the same space. And you we also, fine. yeah, yeah. And, and, and also like we, um, we play them differently quite a lot or sort of like to um, sort of remix them as, in some degree. And uh, especially with uh, the last album, while I was making a lot of the songs, I would often create loops or um, kind of a lot more traditionally electronic, purely based loops um, and would kind of write the song along to them. Um, and so when we finished the record, we were kind of like, oh, well, it's sort of a shame, but like, there's so much more left in this record that we wish we could show. And so, again, we've been kind of sitting about when we're performing these songs. Um, and again, I thought, for me, that's kind of uh, uh, the idea that I love about performing live music is that maybe we would perform an alternate version of a song, but in a completely different way, completely different instrumentation. And it's just for that one tour, very much in that kind of bootlegging style. And I love that you'd hear it that one way for that one tour. And that's it. We'll never do that ever, ever again. Uh, it depends on the rooms and the, the space as well. If you know... Absolutely. You know, if you were on a big arena support tour with someone or your own arena gig, that, that's so different to potentially an amazing kind of 50 person small yeah. intimate venue. And, and having that in mind and the flexibility to not just go out and kind of go, right, we've got to press play and play to a click, and it is what it is. Yeah. End of. That's the kind of beauty of it, I think. Um, I, really, uh, I really wanted to be able to like uh, do these songs, like just. Uh, in a more traditional, like electronic DJ style, you know, as if you were gonna go and see someone like uh, Data Line or someone like that. Yeah, um, I love the idea of being able to perform it in. You know, we get asked to do acoustic sessions and and uh, you know a, a session, at an art gallery or something like that. And the idea of then um, certainly a keen idea and a section that we were working on for the for this tour coming is with these electronic versions of the songs. Um, is to have an electronic version in the set where we're, we're literally, the three of us are sitting down and, and playing an electronic set for two or three songs. Um, and I love the idea of them doing a tour, maybe like that, and just being able to really be flexible with everything and, and, and kind of, uh, and, and show off kind of the different areas. Um, you know, it's kind of, in a weird way, trying to show our working. <laughs> like, yeah. like, we worked so hard, it's a shame no one's gonna hear this stuff. And, so, I love the idea of a, an electronic part. You know, so it's kind of so tried and tested to go, right, we'll go down and be acoustic in the middle and then we'll build back up again to kind of go the complete opposite and, right, let's put our instruments down, the guitars, drums, bass, and let's play the electronic instruments and, yep. and work with that. Um, for those in the live chat, we'll look to kind of wrap this up pretty soon. I, I want to get onto effects pedals and stuff like that cool. for for the live thing, but any other questions for people watching live, fire them into the live chat um, just before, and we'll, we'll try and answer all that stuff before we finish. But yeah, going on to effects, because uh, I wanted to talk about that as well. Well, first of all, do the synths ever get a look in with the effects or is it kind of, that's the touring guitar rig and it stays that way? Um, it's actually, well, I think maybe the chat might help me. Uh, so I, uh, again, trying to work towards having it so that um, I, I kind of, A, want to come up with a, a rig that's very malleable and I can kind of go off-piste uh, as such. Um, yeah. Obviously, when, when we've recorded all of this stuff, you know, especially a lot of the sound toys um, stuff and, and uh, that little plate, I'm obsessed with at the moment. 
uh, and uh, it's just it's just instant great, isn't it? it just yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, so uh, so actually the uh, RB five hundred there on the top left, something I became obsessed with thanks to Nils Fram uh, was just running the piano through a space echo. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just classic. You can't really go wrong. Everything sounds great. Um, and so uh, I've actually been trying to find, um, again, with the dream being that with everything being MIDI controllable, um, that we can kind of have it so that while I have my have to have my attention on singing and playing guitar, that the synth is kind of operating itself in as such. And, and I want, I'd like to, morally, <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's suicide or not, is, is have the actual sounds happening uh, and be able to kind of a send um, I can send MIDI program changes to both the profit and then whatever kind of delay reverb unit or, or whatever effects I have. So they, I, I, in my mind anyway, and, and maybe certainly for our sound guy trying to manipulate these sounds live, we've tried to kind of make it whereas instead of using the sounds from the record that we actually just send it's much easier for him to be able to mix them as it's obviously changing all the time from different songs, yeah. but to have, you know, one, one mono synth line coming in from Adam's stuff, the, the polyphonic stuff coming from me and then all the drum stuff coming from Jack, but them actually be the raw sounds, not, not, not a sample or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I'm actually I'm still trying to find, I know obviously the, the Strymon stuff is, um, is, is kind of the staple, um, yeah. But yeah, I've actually taken the RV500 off because it actually has the space um, uh, space echo setting on it and it has the delay and stuff. So the good thing is, is I can then send the MIDI via my profit to that and, and have them both changing at the same time in time with each other. So when it gets to certain songs, I can have the delays perfectly in time and have the, the settings um, correct for that. And there's a good maybe three or four songs I play pretty much purely on the profit. Um, um, so... I think that's the, the the best I've seen, but it'd be great if there was something a little more comprehensive that wasn't rack based that you could kind of MIDI switch and you could that could be my kind of orcs for a my profit, but then moving on to maybe my modular stuff. I know obviously the mag uh, the magneto has just uh, come out obviously on Strymon and stuff like that. Yeah. But I need I need it to in the heat of the moment. <laughs> I kind of need everything to be MIDI changeable and I can press one button and it does everything um, and, and changes yeah. everything for me. For the effects side, I'm not too sure. Um, dissonant in the chat said uh, maybe a Circlon sequencer oh, okay. to help yeah, control yeah, yeah. the lot rather than you know a, compu a computer would as well, obviously. Yeah. But in terms of the actual effects, I'm not sure in terms of kind of pedal, you know, without, uh, it, you know rack out like you said. Yeah. Just another, you know, when you're independently doing this, you don't want to add another 19 inch rack or A9. Well, <laughs> yeah, I've got, I, I literally, I had a, a TC Electronic uh, G Force that I had lying around and I was using that for a while. The mod matrix and everything on that is is amazing um, as far as malleability, but just it's got quite a big footprint and having to carry all that stuff. Um, I make, I mainly just, it's more stuff on the stage and we've already got a, a ridiculous amount of stuff <laughs> on the stage and, and we're only looking to put in more and so um so yeah so as far as that that rig there that's that's my kind of main uh my main uh guitar pedal board um and uh but yeah i've slowly looked at, at building one i think uh maybe like i know the roland uh <laughs> Forgotten what it's called, but it's like a multi switcher. I've been looking at to kind of have maybe have something like that and build a, a little because um, I've got a, 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 like the uh, analog drive uh, is at, I just love that pedal from Electron. And yeah. I've got tons of uh, I want to say Moogafugas, but these days shouldn't it be a Mogafoga? I don't know. Yeah, um, Mogafoga, I think. Mogafoga. Thing we all get, we get kin, don't we? English for moog. Oh yeah, and like um, uh, 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 a, a guy who actually makes um, a guy called Green, oh, called Andy, and he makes uh, green carrot pedals, um, and actually some of his stuff. Um, so this is actually a prototype that he made, 
but it's just literally like a kind of uh, a chorus and a, and a uh, delay. Uh, yeah. But it just sounds through that profit. It it just sounds like a dream. It is the nicest, fattest chorus ever. <laughs> um, so again, I'd I'd love to. I'd like to kind of start building more of this stuff in live. Um, I think that's called the Lemon and Time. I, I think it's coming. It's called Lemon and Time. Mm. Um, but yeah, his pedals are kind of. He does like these fuzzes, um, but he's just started doing. I, I kind of. I've been like Andy. Can you make stereo? <laughs> Have you ever thought about putting CV <laughs> on yeah. your pedals? Um, just as. But to yeah, I think that's the that's the fun. I think that's what I love so much as well about kind of this world is with MIDI kind of tying everything together um mm. i think like well, there's so much invention now to, to 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 be able to take this stuff live and and like i say the idea of having a modular synth on stage and and it be triggering video and lights and and you know we run everything from from a laptop perfectly in time and you know like we're looking thinking of possibly looking at something where i could run ableton and i could start doing loops and then that would still mean we wouldn't have to have such a set timeline and the lights would, yeah. would follow along with that and, and and it's i'm big into the idea of like i say all of our sets being able to to, to create this whole thing from scratch and you know I, I love thinking of songs and then thinking about the lighting and i can i can just put the midi in and it it will it will do that <laughs> you know like and so yeah. we like to make it so that our our like this tour coming up in, in the next week or so, um, I'm going to be working flat out on just trying to make that the kind of most visceral experience and, and kind of it's so much fun to be like, okay, well, I can program in whatever I want uh, on this side of things. And um, like I say, I'm going to be taking out the analog rhythm and the, and the profit and maybe a digitat. Um, and then Adam's just bought a, a Waldorf blow felt um, as well. And so I kind of getting getting my head around all of them and programming them so that we can kind of uh, hopefully create this experience that's just kind of, A, we've got we can build this a light show around it as well and really mess around with the atmosphere of things. And um, having just bought a kind of a Blade Runner box set, that's sort of what I'm aiming for. <laughs> Thinking of um, effects, uh, Justin in the chat, um, just scroll back up. Yeah, Justin Olsen mentioned an H9. And even tied, that'll probably do oh, it. Yeah, yeah, that's a great call. That is a yeah. great call. A pair of even tied ah. H nines loaded up or something, or maybe even one, because you can stack things in that like mad. I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's yeah. That's got quite a small little footprint, uh, hasn't it? I think. I, seem to, I yeah. think it's like just got a big dial. From what I remember, is that is that what yeah. I'm thinking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want that, to kind of a... get everything in it and then MIDI it up. That would yeah. come down on some serious space potentially. Yeah, I think that's the the compromise is certainly trying to. Uh, he's come back to... in the chat actually, Justin, and said, uh, "Sun Lux, his guitarist, has three H nines and just MIDI messages every song change into them." Wow, done. I guess it's a, a tried and tested. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, I think that is the the trying to the difference between trying to kind of create this very uh, uh kind of um brittle ecosystem uh, in my studio and then find a way to kind of still keep it uh, as authentic as possible live and, and just uh, that's certainly been uh, that's kind of part of the fun of it uh, I suppose but um, but yeah certainly yeah. trying to trying to trying to the, the goal over the next year is certainly uh, I think we'll probably end up recording at the end of the year so I think the, the game is to really try and squeeze in as much as we can and, and really get kind of au fait with these little, uh, as much, uh, as many synths as we can fit safely <laughs> and portably on stage and kind of get as much control over them as possible uh, and then look to kind of try and write with them mm. a bit more organically. Yeah. So I've just done a kind of last call at the bar in the chat room for questions, but one one's come kind of come up that I'd like to kind of end on anyway from uh, Richard uh, Lukes or Lukes. Sorry if I've said your name wrong, Richard. Um, where do you see music going in the next, your music going in the next two years, which is kind of, it'd be great to kind of come back in a year and see, I mean, I've called yeah. it 
rig rundown. It's very much been an open interview about all sorts, but where the rig's gone, where the tour's gone, where the sound of the band's gone, um, kind of where your head's at. But have you got a kind of plan? Where do you see it going? Um, certainly or more. It, <laughs> or is it just more of everything and tour and let the tour inform the next bit? And Well, I think like... I've always kind of said that if we're not in a position where we finish something and the next idea is almost immediately there or we feel like we could do something a bit better, then obviously it would stop. <laughs> so mm. it, it, it's up until this point, I mean, I like certainly the, the biggest idea. And like I say, my head is very much now we've finished this, uh, these alternative uh, versions is how we're going to take this live show and, and really kind of um, just just make it everything I, I would want to see, you know, and everything that that I would be impressed by and, and hopefully um, a, a, and keep making the live experience something extra. Like, I, you know, people like watching uh, that, that Nine Inch Nails tour. They did uh, the Tension tour in, mm. like watching the behind the scenes of that and really seeing them pushing uh technology um to its limits like so many of the things and the and, and the, the processes they were using had just been invented or hadn't really been invented and they had to it, it had to really invent them uh to, to make those things a reality um like that's certainly the dream is to really keep keep pushing this uh, as far as as we can go and Certainly, I'd like to, A, with the band, I'm really keen and I've got a very strong image in my head of, of really getting into a, a rehearsal room and trying to take this whole thing and make it so much more organic and, and, and kind of really pushing what we're doing um, on both sides of things. I feel like with this record, we were really trying to find out and, and really trying to learn this language. and, and uh, and, and I feel like we got somewhere passable by the end of it. Um, and now I'd like to really start in the room and really kind of try and blend the world so that it's it's not a song with electronics. Uh, it, it's kind of everything is a, it's a one whole entity. Absolutely, and, and certainly this idea of being able to create this set where things can be made organically on the fly, like we would if we were improvising anyway. Um, and the idea that Jack's, you know, as of this tour, we'll have Jack, all of Jack's drum sounds and everything, actually the real sound. And, and if Jack wants to change that sound, he can change it on the fly and we can go a bit more off-piste and certainly um, get these uh, little synth islands uh, to a stage where they're really fully integrated in the sound. Um, that's kind of my immediate thing. But I certainly, A, with my modular stuff, I'd really like to... Now, whereas it's been very much about finishing these records, and I literally finished the record and went straight on to doing these alternatives. Um, but now I, I'd certainly like to build in some stuff, like I said, some more sequential stuff. And certainly I'm getting really interested um, in the sampling side of stuff. And it'd be great to, to have something, um, like I say, like the Tip Top Audio Ones uh, or like the Morphogene and those kinds of things. And I'd like just for my own satisfaction <laughs> i suppose to to work on um just more purely electronic stuff on the on the side and and, and kind of have a bit more fun with that and maybe uh I, i'd really like to work with um again like i think there's people um i always forget his name let me just find him on his phone but i uh, someone i've loved absolutely loved uh, a fiery really a simple question at you while, you while you're doing that. Um, Do Barlow says, any plans for a US tour? Oh, there's always a plan. I'd love, I, if every question of, uh, <laughs> we love traveling. It's the best thing in the world. And we love meeting everyone. It's, it's become one of the, our most favorite parts of touring. And we love traveling. Uh, anyway, it adds so much to our, our music and, and really inspires us to, um, to, to, to be better and, and and so I think certainly we're kind of looking for one but as always it's kind of a case of 
finding a tour that's going to work for us. Obviously, we were having a, a played there before. Um, so uh, usually it's the case of, of kind of going on another band's coattails um, and hopefully making the flight costs and, and traveling costs kind of worthwhile um, to, to get over there. But I know certainly like Australia and Japan and, and Scandinavia and, and uh, America have been in our sights for so long. So it, it, uh, unfortunately with, with band stuff, it's, it's always so um, circumstantial. And, and yeah. you know, if we got the right tour over there, um, you know, we were really lucky to do so well and travel so much in Europe early on. Um, and uh, we're hoping, I'm hoping to move to Denmark at the end of the year. So uh, I'm hoping we're going to be doing a lot more Scandinavian <laughs> shows off of the back of that. Um, and again, the idea of going to a cafe in Denmark and just playing electro in the corner of a room is it, uh, my idea of heaven, really. Uh, <laughs> no, just, just noodling away for six hours. Um, it, it sounds like uh, uh, heaven to me. So, um, so yes, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Yeah. Uh, let me just find uh, Tami Nakamoto. Uh, yeah. He is uh his uh i think it's reflections i i came across that um and his production company uh where they just do light installations and it seems like he kind of hand in hand creates um uh the, the music along alongside that um is the dream <laughs> that would be my uh fantasy more art gallery um expensive light show curation one-off uh you know go, get a secret ticket get an email get an address go there for one yeah. night make a record for one evening never play it ever again spend far too long getting everything perfect and just have one special night i'd, I'd certainly like to work with more people as well i think uh even in the chat room i i'm so keen to learn more about this uh, and see what the other side of the fence looks like and so i'm really keen i'm trying to even between now and the next record is find producers and, and people who are working in that arena and, and kind of be like, cool, do you, you want to just work on a tune together or something and see, see what other people are doing and learn, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm, I'm certainly really keen to improve my chops and, and, and it's been fascinating even talking to people um, uh, as I've kind of been talking about being more interested in this and striking up conversations with people and, Again, having more of those stupidity moments where you realise you've been doing something wrong or differently or weirdly, um, and, and it just changes your day. And you're like, I can't wait to go home and try that now. Like, I can't believe I didn't think of it that way before. Yeah. Um, really think, nicely in the uh, chat I've just seen, Jason Coates, who is actually a Manhattan analogue, says sure. if you do go to the US to go through Kansas because they'll bring you a film. Um, ah, amazing. I'd love to. No, I've, yeah, I don't know if you can blush over text, however, Jason <laughs> is uh, far too cool for, for that. But um, Jason's filters at Manhattan Analog, well, and all the stuff, it, you know, it's VCA, super simple 4HP VCA, but it right. just things with audio rate modulation. Uh, but he's just put out a Steiner Symphysystem VCF, which is gorgeous. Right. Um, oh, wow. Video on my channel for everyone watching a bit of self promo yeah. for that, and then the yeah. state variable VCF with a Moog uh, Moog CP3 right. mixer in it. Uh, it's fantastic. So is the MA35. Mm. Uh, just great to see you in the chat, Jason, and keep making super solid stuff. Cause it's really cool. One question that did come up, and we'll just round off the last couple of questions. Um, Ross Beaton said, rolling back a bit, do either of us have suggestions for a song or two or an exercise or two for learning deeper modular techniques going into that kind of homework mm -hmm. idea? Right. Okay. I'll throw one at you, Ross. Um, one that I think is an excellent workout in rhythm is the Detachi album System. Yeah, yes. That is a great uh, record. I into it's Joseph Frioli. Um, or Jaffbox. He has a sound design company called Jaffbox as well. Um, did an interview about it and I asked him about his rhythm and he seems to take the almost square pusher-esque and Aphex points as well idea of if I have a clap or a snare or something that resembles one or the other on the two and the four, where the snare usually would be in, in most yeah. music at least, I can pretty much do what I want with everything else. Yeah. Um, and it's a real kind of schooling. As long as it's just got this kind of 
there's the two and four. It yeah. just does whatever it wants and it can be as chaotic and messy, but it still has this kind of head bob to it because yeah. it's pinned down by something. Um, and maybe looking into different styles as well, that's quite different to James Brown kind of wanted everyone to play on the one. You all right. you yeah. kind yeah. of hit yeah. the one. And it's a different school for a different style, but that's a really interesting one, system for rhythm. Another one is Colin Bender's use of well, non-use of a bass drum module. And I know he's tried lots of them. Right, yeah, yeah. And it isn't to say they're bad, but for him, he finds making one himself with an envelope to the pitch of a sine wave right. or an oscillating filter or, you know, go, go find how, how to make a bass drum. We haven't got time to do that here, but he finds making his own helps it sit better. And he's just oh, okay. got this whole pumping polyphonic thing that just sits around his kick. And, you know, it's hard to think, well, if that was a mutant bass drum or a tip-top bass drum, how would it sound? We can kind of guess, but I imagine there's quite a bit in the fact he's created his own kick. It means he's got all the envelopes involved with the kick, which means he can sidechain everything off it in sure. such yeah, yeah, a yeah. custom, interchangeable way. Mm. It's almost like it's glued together because there's the shared envelope thing between the drums and the other sounds. And Yeah, something I was uh, looking to kind of expand what I was doing uh, because before I, I didn't have anything. Uh, I would kind of like, I would make a kit on, on my stuff and then I would realize I'd kind of run out of voice space. And I was like, well, I've used my oscillator and I've used my filter and I've used my ADSR. Now I've used my VCA. And I was like, I only got two. <laughs> so I'd kick and a snare, record them and, and, and do that. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of, uh, certainly something I, I always want, I haven't really tried any kick or, or, uh, like I know the tip top audio stuff, obviously they do like all the eight eight and nine oh nine stuff. Mm. I've actually I've actually yet to, to 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 try any of those kind of things. But um but yeah like he his uh I, I just love the melodicism of what he does and, and the how it evolves and it's um him and Myla Melodies I feel um I really enjoy their melodic uh the, the melodic aspect to their playing and, and to that uh how, how it kind of I, the more and more I learn about it, the more I realise how difficult it is to keep track of all those things and allow them to 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 move at some speed, <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. uh, and and really know you know whether you're just kind of doing like a switched multiples or something like that, um, or, or you're kind of moving on sequences. Uh, keeping that interest um, as that stuff escalates is um, it is hard. It's uh, I, I, well, as in you know, I, I realise it's it's really quite a feat. Um, yeah, I'd, like I'd mirror that as as well in terms of um, Alex, who did great. You know, another person that makes modular videos and, and a friend as well. Go check out Alex's stuff as Milo Melodies. His kind of journey through and the way he's documented it's great as well. Taking out kind of two cases of modular live. You know, yeah, it's tech. It's club friendly techno. Yeah, and that's what he wants to do kind of get the dance floor moving it's not it's not necessarily nerd out modular stuff but obviously we are still nerd out over it mm. whatever yeah. it is, musically but his journey through sequencing and the switched multiples and how he's handling different rhythms and mixing rhythms mm. being able to do it on the fly but like you said at song speed keep it interesting mm. it, it, it's one thing over an evening to make a sequence develop and just yeah. record chop it up but I, I i can listen to us a, a one loop for hours <laughs> i think it's so interesting <laughs> but yeah i can understand how some people wouldn't i think and i think like that's for me i think um to kind of uh what you're saying uh kind of homework music um funnily enough like i i felt like a something that me and jack really learned um was kind of the lines between trying to find um good melodic jazz uh, and good melodic modular, or even good, just good electronica. The line wasn't that different, as in as much as you know, like the people I would be excited by, uh, and people like Keith Jarrett and all these kind of amazing uh, jazz piano players. There's amazing people who can play these really complex, really dense, um, kind of uh, barely tonal. Uh, kind of progressions uh, and that's great and it's very impressive but I, I still am a real sucker for, for melody and, and what's harder I think to find is people who do stuff like that and 
are using that to create something very beautiful and, and an incredible chord progression that is just, you just encapsulates you and really takes you somewhere. And the same thing I find with rhythm, I think one of my, the biggest things uh, straight away when I got started to get more and more into electronic music was people's use of rhythm and that I found it so much more um, engaging and, and, and taking more risks rhythmically. And I felt like that was something I really, really wanted to learn. And I set about kind of finding as many people as I could who, who were really, you know, exemplary rhythm makers uh, in electronica because I really felt like it was so different and taking more risks. But then at the same time, like if you look at really good drummers, there are, um, you know, like anyone familiar with the band Snarky Puppy, like yeah. me, and, me and Jack constantly would ogle over uh, like Darnell and, and stuff. And their, their choices where they're really playing something that's quite out, um, but it just doesn't kick you off the beat. Like you're still absolutely in the groove. They are playing something that is colorful and is challenging, but you're still, their, their note choice on their, and, their, and their rhythmical choices that they're making, the accents that they're, they're, they're making sure they're covering, um, are still keeping you firmly engaged. They're not detracting from the song. Um, a so good trying to... example of that for drums in a, in a real kind of pop context is um, Aaron Spears, who's yeah. kind of uh, you know very much this kind of black gospel American yeah. scene. Yeah. And a lot of those guys end up on big pop tours, and he's playing at the Modern Drummer Festival from however far back, and he's playing "Caught Up" by Usher. Right, they're just playing to the song, and the groove's great, and and potentially a lot of the people watching this are into. Usher, which whatever, you know, fair enough, whatever. But he's playing the groove and it's great, and then he fills like he's over the bar line, and just as you start to wonder where the one is again, he's just on it, and you've just not yeah. lost the groove, and the way that he's really fluid. I mean, it's just a four-four R and B pop track. It's so simple, yeah. but the way he fills across the bar line is just unbelievable. Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. It's like um like a, a really good recommendation of people that I was trying to find who were really covering all the bases. And I remember hearing that Snarky Puppy Silver record. And that was like them doing a record um, with the Metropole Orchestra. Um, and I remember that record just blew my mind because it was just covering, um, you know, all, all the, the synthetic playing I was looking for, all of the jazz playing I'm interested in, all of the classical playing I was interested in and the, the kind of soundscapes and stuff and just fusing it together so tastefully that it, it almost doesn't feel like your list, you know, it, it, it's almost not, shouldn't be called jazz. In it. I don't know what the word is, but it's just tasteful. And that, that really um, hearing how they were mixing all of those elements uh, and, it, and it just not kicking you off the train. They were just making a beautiful piece of music. Um, I, I found like that was just such a refreshing thing and, and bands like a, if you haven't heard the band F the Clang um, uh, they they have a song called Black Summer um, off of a, an album called Pyramida and I remember hearing that and again um, they're a band that just keep evolving and they uh, are now a purely electronic band called Lima um, but they still have songs but they just mix these incredible elements of, of beautiful cinematic strings and stuff and then modular synths and polyphony and, 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 and drum machines and all this kind of stuff. But they just weave these fantastic textures um, and, and they're just a fantastic way of, of hearing all of this stuff come together in a song anyway. Mm. Final uh, thing from the chat. Anyone watching that I haven't answered what you've mentioned or anything else, leave it as a YouTube comment. You know, come back in a bit when YouTube's crunched. Yeah, do it. I'll, I'll, um, I'll sit on the comments afterwards, so if anyone has any uh, questions. Yeah, on, it'll it yeah. might take YouTube a little while to kind of crunch the numbers on it, but the live sure. chat, unfortunately, just disappears. I can't right. see it. It just goes, um, which is a shame. It would kind of be nice if that was documented somewhere, because the, the, mm. as has been, as there has been, <laughs> excuse me, Tonight, okay. there's always a great live chat going on. Uh, but Barlow just mentions, uh, have you listened to Stevie O? Mm. Well, enough off, off of the back of Mylar Melodies, because I know he's, yeah. he's, he's, mentioned, <laughs> he's mentioned him. Mylar's a um, god figure, I think. He mentions him 
a lot. But yeah, yeah certainly the way that Stevio is using very simple building blocks and utilities mm. to just cascade kind of logic and switching through his system is it's just beautiful. It's such a fluid system because by changing yeah. such simple parts of what's going on, like that mm. kind of cascade effect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely mm. the whole switch multiple thing. Uh, I, I love the kind of, uh, again, like something, again, it's like an untouched world for me, but certainly, I, I, and even for yourself as well, from what I can see from, you know, watching your videos, I mean, I, I, I've ogled so many before by, <laughs> before making purchases. Um, and that idea of kind of uh, allowing a kind of random element to, to start making decisions and, and, you know, you're kind of just, instead of, I mean, for me, I, normally I come in with a, a whole melody or a whole song or whatever but the idea of just having this fairly organic system where you're essentially closing the range of a, of a melodic choice and kind of building on from there um, it's just a whole kind of whole new world <laughs> for me um, and so uh, so certainly that's something you know and the whole kind of Turing machine type things um, and like uh, the uh, chance um, like that seems yeah. like uh, the cubic chance that looks like a dream because again for it's trying to take something that's random and try and control it in some way or at least make it like random in the same way that ipod shuffle isn't random yeah. <laughs> as in you're trying to want to like bottle it down and, and kind of well I, I want this on the bar and, and certainly a lot of the stuff i've done for the record so many times i'm like well i've got a random thing but I need to somehow at least make sure one of the beats is hitting correctly. Or, yeah, it can't be endlessly random. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't often do much for anyone. Um, yeah, I mean, my current thing, just to end on, before, I know I keep kind of threatening that we're going to finish. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've said it a few times. My current thing is trying to master this kind of four-voice polyphonic thing where it's, it's very generative and random, but really constrained into a certain set of musical um, parameters. That, and that's kind of, that's almost the composition of it, is that the parameters that are set around it, and then the machine plays itself. But then trying to mix in some performance so that I can steer the random, and obviously a fluctuating random or stepped random yeah. sample and hold is just going to be random. I, it's very kind of hard to say, I want you to be random, but I always want you to be rising yeah, 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 yeah. You could mix a rising voltage so it would fluctuate around that point. Yeah, I, I generally and, mix the two. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's trying to master that and let the machine generate something musical and interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very much where I'm, I'm about four tracks into an yeah. album where I've, I've multi tracked it all out. Um, for people that support me on Patreon, I've I'll give the album away for free and I'll probably give all the projects out as well. I know a lot of people want to see how it's been built and I'll just probably chuck it on Bandcamp or yeah. I don't know, maybe do physical if people want it, but I want to get this album out and kind of support people on Patreon that support me doing it. Um, nice. So yeah, cool. Well, um, we'll put links in the description for everything we've kind of mentioned and remember comment. We'll both watch the video for a while. Um, yeah. And thanks to everyone in the live chat. And thanks to you, Andrew, for coming on. And no worries. I kind of had this idea of uh, I'm going to kind of grill you on the, you know, it being a rig rundown. That's the kind of premise of this show. But it's been really nice to break out into just music, wider yeah, kind yeah, yeah. Of approaches to music on a kind of vaguer pathway than just nerding out about <laughs> yeah. the gear. Um, there's, there's lots of stuff you've mentioned I want to check out as well. So, yeah. Thanks well, for coming thank, on. Thank you. It's, it's an honor, honestly, for, for someone making the crossover as such. It's uh, It's been great. And obviously, you know, part of making this record was to raise a white flag <laughs> and hope, hope that some people see, you know, and so on. So and anytime, and obviously, I, I, I'd love to, 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 to show people, you know, as we do things and, and any questions as well, or, or anyone, obviously, I've not, uh, my uh, stand here is a little bit wobbly. As you can see, so okay. I didn't, I didn't, I had to turn my computer around. It's normally there. So um, I, uh, but yeah, anyone, any questions or anything, get in touch on, on my Twitter or anything or, or and, uh, and, and even musically, I mean, I, I'd love to learn. So, you know, educate me as well. If you have any suggestions of people I, I should listen to or, 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 you know, even working together on something, uh, something I'm, I'm really keen to do. So I, I, along with yourself, you know, so um, 
So yeah, yeah well, we'll, we'll soon be carrying on to talk. And um, I love that kind of educate me, keep learning. The community around this is they, they kind of, well, amazing, really. I've, I've not yeah. found that in kind of, and it's not to knock it as an instrument or anything, but I never found that as a guitar player, the kind of yeah. community that, that is this modular Absolutely. thing. And I, I think from people outside it, there's there's a potential maybe to someone to look at this show and kind of presume, why would I want to talk to a guitar band or why do I want to listen to Ben talk about how he used to play drums or he teaches music? You know, I'm into modular and I like modular, but it's not it's not this really insular, closed off thing that potentially some people think it is. It's such an open kind of it's a kind of weird niche of music technology, but that's just got such an open community around it. I think that's what's so attractive to it. I've learned more. I've said it a few times. I think I've learned more from modular than the whole of my degree. Um, yeah, absolutely. Which was a music, you know, music technology degree. Um, modular probably costs more than the degree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so well, maybe, I, I think that's what's that's what's so great about it. And, and like even the you know trying to myself kind of uh, kind of be like oh, I I like this too. Uh, in in and kind of learn myself. Um, it, I think it's exciting, and I think, like we were saying earlier, like I think it's quite new. And I think people traditionally, maybe, I mean, you know, taking the early Moog stuff, like that only universities could really afford that stuff, you know. And now it's kind of in the hands of people, and and it's kind of moving quicker than it ever has. And even you know, every year there, are, even every month there are like new modules coming out that. Are really pushing the boundaries and I just don't really find that in in much other music especially not the guitar world I, I feel like it harks back and and kind of is, can be a bit stale so it's so exciting to see um what you know it being pushed all the time and like I say so many creators I love the idea that people someone can make a module and there's no like big company that it's just you never get a look in do you know what I mean like it's so yeah. nice that some people find something and um, and then just jump on it and they're like, have you heard about this? And it becomes such a big thing. And I think it just, A, I think as well, it naturally um, appeals to people who, who kind of want a bit more detail out of their life. And certainly for me, you know, like this is probably the most fun I'll have in an interview for a long time. <laughs> because I, I just, is all I, this is all I care about and all I want to talk about. And, and I'm excited to, of course, I'm excited to sh show someone something that I worked on for, you know, 48 hours uh, and it had little to no significance on the record what so that to me is is, <laughs> is, is the, the excitement you know so uh, so yeah so I, I, I'm honored honestly it, it means so much to uh, yeah to come on today anyway, so thank you I've had the pleasure of listening to the the more electronic alternative versions uh, yeah that's coming that's coming do you have a rough thing for that is it weeks away months away well, I uh soon 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 in fact i can't actually i can't say but well, soon. you never know Very, two weeks <laughs> <laughs> two weeks is the joke but yeah two weeks doing it you know the kind of level you're at you're not it's not just waiting on you uploading it on band camp or something there's obviously no, management no, no. And, and all sorts to go through but um, but yeah this that's that was the key is is that maybe more for your audience is that we i wanted to do more and ele more electronic versions and on the album there are like the song called indigo and a song called fireflies and before me that are almost entirely electronic um but i wanted to do alternative versions of the songs that were purely electronic so we've been recording them um and they will be coming soon with some new music as well um and uh and yeah and and, and the, the synths i mean even on the new music have a, a, a much more prominent if they could be more prominent than they are on the album, yeah. but they have a lot more prominent role. Um, and and uh, so, yeah, so that's been really fun. And our management and label have been amazing to be like high a rock band, but can we record a little, you know, electronic <laughs> EP type thing? And uh, they've been amazing to, to let us kind of just, just jump into it. Um, so I'm excited to hear wh where that goes. And then I think the plan is to keep going as well. There's certainly been more classical ideas and, uh, and I'd like to, maybe try and play some of these songs in a more traditional electronic context. I love the idea of turning up and I know like Atoms for Peace, they had a great thing where they were kind of Ableton live slash loop some of the songs and kind yeah. of like how Fortet performs as well. He's sort of bringing in bits, but then with a microphone and a guitar as well and trying to, trying to balance that world. And I love the idea of 
sitting with my analog rhythm and, and kind of coming up with these little funky versions. And certainly on the live tour coming up, um, the, the focus is, is to kind of start introducing these songs. So there'll definitely be an electronic ver um, kind of three or four songs um, in the middle of it as well. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're, I'm super excited to, 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 to get them out. And uh, yeah, it certainly will hopefully appeal to more uh, of your audience, hopefully as well. Yeah, perfect. Well, um, arcaneroots.com is what's up. There's all the live dates, all the videos there. As I said, I will put links in the description. Very, very last thing, just because uh, Richard in the chat mentioned seeing me on Sunday and telling me how to pronounce his name properly. Um, <laughs> Modular Meats, which is the kind of brand of yeah. the stuff I'm doing. Modular Meats, uh, the Electric Spring Festival. So Modular Meats Electric Spring is a week today uh, at Huddersfield what? University. For free to anyone that's, I guess, in the north of England that can travel to Huddersfield and the Creative Arts Building in the uh, university. Free, come in. There'll be a couple of manufacturer, manufacturers, uh, lots of users with, you know, taking cases of Sims to play on and very much like this chat, just they're willing to let you come and play on stuff, chat. There'll be tea, coffee, you know, there's plenty of pubs around if people want to have a drink than that. But, um, yeah, Sunday afternoon next week, I'll put a link in the description for... Um, the module meets events and stuff. So yeah, great. Thanks a lot, Andrew. And, no uh, worries at all. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. -bye.